yesterday was one of those clown show moments of me trying to do, you know, like whether it be a multiplayer game or any game really, of like a first playthrough, blind playthrough idea, where like I tried to keep myself in the dark about something, but then the trade-off is I got the release date wrong, I guess. Although I swear I read December 5th, but it must have just said somewhere like I, the last time I saw it was like a few weeks back. So either they changed it from 5th to 6th or it just must have said, it still says the maintenance thing up there for the 5th, even though it's not. But like, uh, it's like in Kathy Rain where I uh, took like an hour to find the lock, but then it takes me like a minute to actually solve the puzzle related to the lock. Yeah, are they? Are you gonna show me like a prompt and is this actually it or is it still not out? It's still not out or maybe it is and it just doesn't bombard you with prompts, which would be the first time ever So I'm gonna wait all day again today. But yeah, I, I came in yesterday excited to do it in the morning because I thought it released yesterday But whatever that is the trade-off with doing like a blind playthrough of everything is that I deliberately kept myself so much in the dark that I didn't even know that much about it. And I still don't know what the hero power does. So I think today, now I'll look at the cards just because they're really uh, making this take way too long to, to come out now. Like, I honestly don't even really care, but I just want to have like one last, you know, release day experience with this. This might be the last time I ever do it before this game dies completely. That's why they're called Death Knights, lol. Because, I mean, I would say that about WoW too, like, oh, they, you know, Wrath saved the game, but it's not like the game was in a bad spot then. They had just, you know, BC had done great, so that's not even really a good joke. If Wrath had come out, like, after Warlords of Draenor or something, I guess they still do evoke, <coughs> they still did evoke the Lich King. Like the way that Sylvanas goes and fucking beats, uh, whatever, Bolvar. He, she beats Bolvar's ass. So we have 1,400 gold, which I would like to spend on cosmetics and card backs that fit. Like, how how do they do it so, like, unplanned? Like, let me actually look up. But yeah, basically, the, the moral of yesterday was there are some negatives that come with <laughs> being a blind playthrough, even in multiplayer games. Let me look it up and then I'll actually just read through the cards at this point. I was trying not to do that yesterday because I wanted it to actually come out first, but who cares? I can't believe I messed that up though a whole day off. That Knights came out in October 15, 2008. Wrath of the Lich King. That's really what I want to see. Safe search. Oh, it's going to show me roll 34 for Death Knights. I mean, I guess it'll come out when it comes out unless it's somehow bugged out in my uh, capacity. It'll make you do some annoying, stupid-ass tutorial stuff for it, too. So I've looked at the hero cards. What else would there even be to look at? I guess just the cards themselves. In fact, like I said, I don't even still know what the hero power does. Maybe I'll save that for actually going into the game. The final darkness falls over these lands. So this one you're going to be seeing and hearing a lot of. You can't actually see all the voice lines, so that I guess you have to wait till the game. And I'm sure people will be spamming them, but for once you won't really mind if they're spamming them. The Lord of the Scourge knows that Undeath is truly the greatest adventure. Nothing shall prevent me from having my revenge. Now, maybe it's just me, but there's something about his face in this that looks a little bit clownish. Like, it doesn't look... He, like, looks too happy and, and jolly and stuff. I, I don't really... His mouth... I don't really buy it. I think this is kind of supposed to be based on the Warcraft Reforged model, I think. But I haven't played that, so I, I wouldn't know. He was always destined to be, con to be king. That's not the one they hoped. Yeah, okay, that's a good line, actually. So that you have to, like, pre-purchase or whatever, and it's one of the few 3D model ones, I guess, that they have in the whole game. Nothing shall prevent me from having my revenge. Kingslayer, that is a pretty badass title, at least. Arthas doesn't need to wear hats to protect from the cold. He finds warmth in the deaths of his enemies. Then for winning a thousand games as Death Knight in Arena or Jewel. I mean, I like the... Nothing shall prevent me from having I like the title more than even the picture. That is really badass. But yeah, I was practically begging for a Nurzul one. I, that's one thing I would pay real money for. Give me a fucking Nurzul cart one that is the armor of Nurzul. To show that was the original OG Lich King. Forget about this clown overdone Arthas thing. They've milked him a little bit too much. And we've forgotten about the original Lich King. The knights are driven by a single purpose. Retribution. Although our kind has no place in your world, we will fight to bring an end to the Witch King. This I vow. So that was, you know, he was a big part of the whole, you know, becoming a Death Knight class 
intro, which was pretty long and annoying, but I always defended it, at least in the sense that what would you rather do? Grind up from 1 to 55, or they give you a free 55, but you have to go through the tutorial. Uh, it was annoying, though, because I made multiple Death Knights. I don't know why. Like, what classes did I even get to 80 at that point in the game? I had a mage with my original character, then I did a warrior, and then I also did a Death Knight, which kind of surprised me. Just because you start at 55, it felt kind of like, fuck it, I may as well try it. I never played a monk, so yeah, I wonder when they'll add the monk class to Hearthstone. Uh, or I played it, like, very briefly, just to see what it was like. I seem to associate it mentally, like, only with healing. I always think of just them doing a like, healing mist or something. So I wonder if they will add that. I like how long they actually took to do this, because this seems like such an easy thing. They were kind of saving it, I guess, for when the game was actually dying. That is maybe a true thing, right? Because you had to think this would, would have been one of the first expansions they might have done. I thought they would release Death Knight before they did Demon Hunter. It's kind of weird that they reversed it that way, right? Like, if you follow the way they released them in WoW, they should have done Death Knight, Monk, and then Demon Hunter. So there, those are the four. Um, there'll be some kind of card backs, which I don't really care too much about. I wonder what the coin is. Like, uh, would there be a Lit March of the Lich King? Right, that one looks fine. I was almost going to spend like 600 gold on a, on a card back just to fit with this. What would be the one that's like, rel how do they even organize these? I don't get it. November 20 Oh yeah, the one for this month is fucking stupid. Where did it even go? I actually don't know how these are organized once you have them. November, December. Yeah, th this is like a Christmas themed one, but they should have a little more presence of mind to... It's like they ran out of ideas because you already have like the... There's one with Frostmourne. There's one with the Frozen Throne. Like there's a couple of them already. Uh, let me actually look for them. So I'm going to try to incorporate my whole elusive theme. That's just something I associate with Death Knights and maybe I've overdone it a little bit, but it's just more like I was expecting to not have to play so many random games yesterday as like these original decks. So Unholy Knight is kind of boring. I've had that before in the past. This one's okay. I was considering that. This one, I, I like how they have the three specs. At first I didn't even realize that it was meant like that. I, I just always saw Unholy Knight as like the only one. Uh, but there is one for Frostmourne, which is pretty good. That might be the only... I thought there was another one that's just like the Frozen Throne. Ice Crown, maybe, maybe... No, I think there's still another one. Black Temple. Like, this one's kind of just bland. Like, it's cool and all, but... There's nothing really special about it. You could also do Nax Ramus. I mean, you don't really associate that directly with him, but... I almost think of Kel'Thuzad just as much as I think of the Witch King. Uh, this is pretty good. <laughs> I just don't want to waste gold on it because I actually am short on dust. Free to play player curse. How did you get this? Dark Wanderer Tavern Brawl. Alright, so I actually looked through all the fucking cards now for the first time ever. And we'll keep in suspense about the, the hero power. Unless there's a way to see it. I, I don't know. I don't really care. They're really... Oh my god, I'm glad I didn't wait longer yesterday. I finally just googled it because I was like, how could they be taking this long? Although it wouldn't be a surprise. It wouldn't be the first time. But no, it wasn't December 5th. It was December 6th. Horn of Winter for Zero refreshed two mana crystals. That's kind of weird. This feels like a druid card or something that has nothing to do with Death Knights. I don't know. I guess I don't know what they've done with Death Knight abilities over time. Like, uh, I just think of what they were in Wrath. Much better than the Horn of Lossiter. I don't know what that is. Uh, common. Okay. Bone. Like, how many cards would there even be? One page, two page, three page. Yeah, see, there's not that many. So anybody who's like, who actually plays the game regularly, more so than I do, would easily be able to just make every card day one. It wouldn't be a big deal. And I'm sure people already have their meta shit. Like, this is my whole philosophy, like with chess. I don't look up anything. I, I try not to do too much analysis or take advice or learn the fundamentals, like openings and stuff. It's like the world's first blind playthrough of chess right here on my channel. It actually is kind of true. And because nobody would ever do it like that. So I, I bring that to every game that I play. Like every game has to be like a blind first playthrough. I don't really care about, you know, metagaming or anything. I just want it to be a fresh experience. Bone Breaker. After your hero attacks a minion, deal two damage to the enemy hero. Okay, that's kind of boring and 
So I don't know what this means. Like, it'll give you a rune or something? Because you might think, oh, those are the two mana crystals, but it's not because... So there'll be some kind of combo. This could be a bad idea to just introduce something that far out as a mechanic. Um... Where, like, if you get three, then you can use them to do some crazy thing. I assume that means when you play it, it'll give you that many rune slots or or whatever charges. <clears throat> I see... Oh, did I read the... Most... Many weapons are bone breakers if you swing them hard enough. Icy touch. Deal two damage to an enemy and freeze it. Vibe check. It's kind of anticlimactic in a way, though. Like, Frostmourne is already a card. Or not a card, but... Well, yeah, like, that you get from the Witch King. So that those are some cards that could have been... Well... It's not like this game is beyond recycling cards or whatever. So we, I, what I'm interested in seeing, I didn't see it when I scrolled past, is if there's a Death Knight hero card, possibly even Nurzul. I'm going to be obsessed and, and complaining about that the whole time. Give us something. There is one Nurzul in Hearthstone, but it's actually in one of the uh, solo adventures or whatever, where you just deal, deal against him. And he's not even the Lich King in that. He's like the original Nurzul. Icy Touch, deal two damage to target and freeze it. Vibe check. Okay. Yir, Ymir Jar, I don't I never know how to say that. Frostbreaker. Battle Cry, gain one attack for each of your frost spells in your hand. Okay. So you can kind of, you know, play into a little overlap with Mage, which would be interesting with the neutral cards, actually. Also gains plus one attack for each time your opponent mispronounces his name. Okay, there's so it's a two, 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 actually. Two mana blood. Oh shit, there. Th See, this is where they get a little bit too far, though. This is going to be too much to commit to one class. Like, where you have all the different runes and... Oh, God. This seems like a bad idea already. I can just predict it. Blood tap for two. Give all minions in your hand plus one, plus one. Send three corpses to give them plus one, plus one. Oh, so maybe that's what the hero power does. I'm going to try to extrapolate and put together what the hero power does and even how much it costs to... Uh... Or maybe, you know what, this expansion will finally do is introduce a proper graveyard. I guess what truly introduced the graveyard... Because if you remember, for the longest time in the game, there was never anything that brought anything back from the dead or acknowledged death as a mechanic in this game. Not even because they were censoring it, that just wasn't part of the board. When it first started to be a thing was with the priest cards, like Resurrect and whatnot. That's where you could finally bring stuff back, and so that acknowledges that there's a graveyard where stuff goes, because you can't actually see it on the field. So this might be one of those things. Send three corpses to give them plus one, plus one more. Come join us in the tavern. We have whatever you're drinking on tap. Yes, even that. Dark transformation for two. <coughs> Transform an undead into a four or five undead monstrosity with rush. So for two mana, you transform an undead into a 4-5. That's pretty good value. Undead monstrosity. The Northrun Arm Wrestling Championship just found its new champion. Right. I feel like they sometimes try to be a little too cute with these flavor texts, but some of them are pretty good. I should do a flavor text ranking of this like I did with my whatever Luigi's Mansion uh, portrait ghost thing. Death Chiller for two. After you cast a spell, deal one damage to two random enemies. So you started off, you had a whole bunch of ice rune, ice rune, ice, uh, nothing. Why wouldn't this one give one then? A couple of them give ice runes. This gives blood runes. This gives uh, unholy rune. I would assume it's kind of hard to make out the green, but I assume that's what it would have to be. So the ice is a blue circle. The blood is a red diamond and the unholy is a green square. I don't know if that's what it was actually in... I, I feel like the blood one was something different altogether. I don't think it was a diamond. Or it looked completely different if it was. Death Chiller. After you cast a spell, deal one damage to two random enemies. Man, death is like the most chill state. You've got nothing to do but relax. True. Two mana. Hematurge. Spend a corpse to discover a blood rune card. I imagine that the corpse thing has to do with hero powers. Although it is weird to see so many cards then play play into that because like imagine every other class like oh every mage card was just like at the beginning of the game too every time you use your hero power this happens there weren't that many cards like that he's here to pump you up bend a corpse to discover a blood rune card it gives you two blood runes or maybe i have it backwards maybe it doesn't give you two blood runes it maybe costs two blood runes which would maybe justify the value on some of these a little bit 
you're you're gonna kind of have to make a spec deck because you're not going to be able to play all these cards otherwise i guess if that's the case two mana necrotic mortician battle cry if a friendly undead died after your last turn discover an unholy rune card i don't know if these are going to overlap with like probably not because those oh i wonder if they'll add that to the lich king's cards like now they cost runes or something i hope they don't because well in fact that doesn't make sense because it's a neutral card so yeah they couldn't do that her hair, just like your name, is full of ticks. Friendly undead died after your last turn. Discover an unholy rune card. Plague strike. None of these cards so far have really like jumped out as something really super interesting. Two mana plague strike. Deal three damage to a minion. If it kills it, summon a two-two zombie with a rush. Rampaging zombie, not wanting to infect anyone with this cold, the Death Knight politely coughed into his shoulder. Now, you could have obviously read all this like months ago, or at least a month ago, I'm sure. I just didn't see the point. I just like to see it when it first comes out. In fact, I'd rather would have seen it just in a game, but now I'm getting impatient about waiting for... Like, who the fuck knows when it would come out, but it should already be out. Not wanting to infect anyone with this cold. At least when they were doing the live maintenance, it didn't like disconnect me. I could just still, you know, I was still playing, but it obviously didn't make it live yet. Not wanting to infect anyone with his cold, the Death Knight politely coughed into his shoulder. Vampiric Blood for two. Uh, not released yet, cannot be crafted. So there are some cards that you get from pre-ordering something that you wouldn't get until the March of Arthas or whatever. Like if you look at, you go to like Solo, Adventure, <coughs> Solo Adventures or something. Um... Hope is in four hours. Maybe that's what it means that it'll come out in four hours, which is annoying. I, I don't know how you really know that. I feel like they're so random sometimes, too. I remember waiting, like, back in the day for one of those things to come out, and it did take, like, the whole day. I can't remember what it was, but, like, oh, yeah, they said they'd release at such and such time, like, 12 o'clock in the, after, you know, noon or 1 or something, but then it ended up being, like, 7 or 8 o'clock. It's like, why do people even bother? Vampiric Blood for two, give your cost three runes, or gives you three. It doesn't it wouldn't really make sense for abilities to give well, actually that is kind of how it worked, isn't it? You would do an ability and it would give you well, certain abilities would give you runes and certain abilities would cost runes. So Vampiric Blood, give your hero plus five health. Now that's kind of weird, because that doesn't mean it heals you for five, it means you gain five base health. Oh, so there's going to be some crazy bullshit where, like, you keep recycling this card and your hero ends up with, like, a million health, like we see in Magic the Gathering decks. Spend three corpses to gain five more and draw a card. So the way this is phrased clearly indicates that it's max health, not, not healing. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Two mana, Vicious Bloodworm, one blood rune. Give a minion, battle cry, give a minion in your hand, attack equal to this minion's attack. Minion in your hand. Okay, that's nothing crazy. Not to be confused with the vicious bloodworm. Is that another... Wait, what? Oh, okay. Spelling joke. Three mana. This is one frost rune. Acolyte of death. Three, four. After a friendly undead dies, draw a card. Okay, that's pretty... Like, what about the cult master or whatever? Like, what? It's a 4-2 for 4, I guess. But, I mean, that's a pretty boring effect. And it wouldn't even have to be an undead that dies. Just anything that dies. 3 mana, 2 blood runes, asphyxiate. Destroy the highest attack enemy minion. This is like a hammer shot type of vibe. It's surprising that there isn't quite a game like... Uh, quite a card like this in the whole game. Right, that it's been out this long. There is nothing that reads quite like that. So it might seem like a boring basic effect. But it's actually kind of unique from what I can think. There's a lot of stuff that just destroys an enemy minion, like uh, assassinate and stuff. But I see dead people, a lot of dead people. Okay. I find your abundance of attack disturbing. Never mind the fact that, you know, people would always clown on, on Blizzard for that. Like, oh, they copied, they copied Star Wars. It's like the story of Darth Vader and, and you know, with Arthas and Anakin. Destroy the highest attack enemy minion. They even both end up in like a, you know, apparatus that changes their way of speaking. Darth Vader and 
It's to show that they've gone cold emotionally. So like I even defend that no at the end of Revenge of the Sith. A lot of people think that's like cheesy and stupid, but I thought the whole point of it was actually pretty effective that like he's trying to show like he's trying to express his last gasp of emotion over Padme or whatever, right, that he's been through, but he can't because it's like, well, you can't at least hear it, right? It's sort of draining the ability of him to express his human emotions that is kind of reflected in the coldness of the voice, the robotic nature of the voice. So I thought that was actually kind of good. Destroy the highest attack enemy minion. And then this is three mana Blight Fang, one unholy rune, three, three beast. So yeah, the undead moniker here is surprising that, that it was never there. Or maybe it has been there and I just never <laughs> paid attention, but it really wouldn't have mattered much to this point. In fact, all enemy minions, when they die, you summon a 2-2 zombie with taunt. That's actually kind of good. It is a legendary. The giant enemy spider. Menacing zombie, 2-2 with taunt. When they die. It doesn't actually do any damage. So even if you were to give it poisonous on top of that, it wouldn't do anything. Three mana, one blood, uh, one blood rune, two five undead, dark fallen neophyte. Spend two corpses to give all minions in your hand plus two attack. It's actually a hairball. So there's going to be two conflicting mechanics. Not only the runes, but also the corpses. So I'm not sure what uh, gives you the corpses, if not the hero power. It does seem like that would be kind of a bad idea, though, to rely that much on the hero power. And of course, playing this in wild would be super fun because you could come up with all kinds of crazy combinations. The meat wagon, uh, meat wagon, meat grinder combo for some crazy thing, I bet. Three mana, one ice rune, glacial advance, frost. Deal four damage, your next spell this turn costs two less. It would at least be more fitting if it was like your next ice spell, frost spell. You just wait, I'll get there in 10 years and then you'll be sorry. <clears throat> about the <laughs> appropriate thing to say climate alarmist that's how long it'll take before the end of the world three mana one frost rune howling blast frost deal three damage to an enemy and freeze it deal one damage to all other enemies okay that's pretty boring for death knights yelling really loudly is part of an, a valid attack strategy really you don't see that uh, too often in the lore i don't think Three mana, one unholy rune, meat grinder, three four mech, battle cry, shred a minion in your hand, in your deck, to gain three corpses. I don't understand really what the base mechanic of the corpses is. You would think it would tell you in some way, like, it is a key word. I guess you'd have to make one of them first. After, after the Horde and Alliance Siege Ice Crown Citadel, they took these back to use in their in their delis. Well, that's probably what they were originally used for anyway. Soulbreaker, 3 mana, 3-2, three, 1 blood rune. After your hero attacks and kills a minion, gain 2 corpses. It's just kind of weird how it's treating it like you killed a minion, so why would you get 2 corpses from it? 2 for 1 special. It would make more sense, I don't know. 3 mana, 1 unholy rune, unholy frenzy, good picture. Choose an enemy minion. Your minions attack it. Resummon any that die. Your minions attack. Resummon any that die. But only of your minions. It, or does that mean... The way it's worded, you can almost interpret it as... If theirs dies, they get it back too. Choose an enemy minion. Your minions attack it. And then resummon anything in that encounter that dies. Through pug. So what would be the point? Four mana, three ice runes. Lady Death Whisper, legendary, four, three undead. Death Rattle, copy all frost spells in your hand. Okay, that's kind of okay, I guess. Of course, there aren't that many <laughs> cards in general here, right? Like, that's the problem with when something like this first comes out. Not only are there not very many cards for the class, but everybody's going to be playing the class. And so everybody, this makes it so much even more narrow. Right, nobody's going to be playing fun or interesting decks, or maybe in wild they will be. Because what would be more interesting than just playing, seeing Death Knight versus Death Knight all day, would be seeing other classes that come up with new fun things with all the neutral cards, or I guess even the class cards, but I'm thinking more along the lines of like, 
combine some super old neutral effect with something new that just came out. Four mana malignant horror, two four undead reborn. At the end of your turn, send five. How can you be reborn if you're dead to begin with? At the end of your turn, send five corpses to summon a copy of this minion. It could be one of those endless chains that just... Well, it might be hard to get five corpses, though. It might just be like an ongoing... Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe your hero power isn't even an activatable thing. It maybe it just means every time a minion dies, you get one corpse counter. Which would be kind of boring and stupid and, and narrow, but... Not one of those that's good in, like, every situation the way that... All the other hero powers are. That would be a bit contrived. Pop goes the pustule. Okay. Might of Benadol for four. Yeah, this is the best weapon card you're going to get because you already fucking have Frostmourne. You ruined it. Four mana. That could have been the legend, first legendary weapon exciting fucking thing. Or it could have been part of the hero card that you you play a hero card of the Lich King and then you get to use it. Uh, four mana, two Frost Runes, four, two. Might of Benadol. Spend up to three corpses. Freeze that many enemy minions. None of those might at night fights the light, not quite the blight, right? That's it. How come there's nothing over five costs? Isn't that weird? Why would... Wait, what? That's peculiar. That's not like a trend that, oh, when an expansion first comes out, they only release cards up to a certain cost. That actually seems very weird. Unless they're saving those for, like... Doing the March of the Lich King thing. The little adventure, which... I don't even know what that would cost in terms of gold or whatever. I probably wouldn't even be able to do it. Or they'll release, like, one wing at a time if it's, like, the old old days. Four mana, one unholy rune, Nerubian... Yeah, this is what I was excited to see, too, aside from Nurzul. Both of the Nurs. Nurzul and Nerubians, I like. Nerubian Swarm Guard, one three with Taunt, Undead. Battle. There was that great line from somewhere. I forget what it was, but like how they were they were caught between like a Scylla and Charybdis moment, right? Because the Nerubians weren't associated with the Lich King at all before, right? That that was just their natural habitat. So they got caught fighting between the Scourge, and so they dug deep into the ground or whatever to escape and and plan their attack. And then they ended up running into the old gods' minions. So that's like the perfect Warcraft analogy of Scylla and Charybdis, like in the Odyssey where you're stuck between a rock and a hard place kind of thing. Like both are bad options. That is the perfect moment. So like, uh, whatever. They were encroaching upon Yog Saron's territory, and they were getting pushed back by the Scourge. <laughs> Haunt. So either they got overtaken by one or the other. Although you don't really see any that are controlled by the old gods. They probably just kill them. Haunt summon two copies of this minion for four. So you get three one threes with taunt. Not too crazy. How long can this go on? Apparently even in death. Making fun of the uh, Serenite chain gang thing. Four mana, tomb guardians. Summon two 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 zombies with taunt. Uh, shadow. Is what it's considered. But I guess Shadow will double as Unholy. Why not just call it Unholy, I wonder? Just something to overlap with uh, Warlocks and Shadow Priests, I guess. Two Unholy Runes. Tomb Guardian. Summon two, two, two zombies with Taunt. Spend four corpses to give them Reborn. A lot of stuff just with Taunt. From the Spider. From that last thing we just saw. Menacing Zombie. An Absolute Thriller. Okay, good one. We've seen enough fucking Michael Jack's... Not Michael Jackson zombies for one month with my whole, uh, for one year with my whole plants versus zombie fixation. Five mana, two blood runes, blood boil. Now, it does say include uncraftable, so yeah, I don't get why there's nothing over five costs. That's kind of weird. I've never seen that before, like with any expansion where they would arbitrarily do that. So I assume <laughs> a lot of the cards are going to be locked behind, you know, you had to pre-order the thing to get them. Or it'll be like, uh, you have to do the March of the Lich King, whatever the fuck. Blood Boil. I don't even really care about that as much. Like, I'll just do my elusive deck with the uh, Death Knight thing and I won't even care. But none of these cards really have to do with that. That's the problem. These mechanics are kind of insular, where it's like, you do a, you do a mechanic like the runes or the... Or the corpses and then you can do something very specific it has no usability in a universal sense right it's one of those things that caters to standard play i guess because in wild like a lot of this stuff doesn't interact too well or maybe we'll have to really think about it to figure out how it would blood boil so blood is also considered shadow so there's shadow for 
for unholy in blood and then there's frost for frost obviously blood boil life steal in fact all enemy minions at the end of your turns every turn they take two damage that's kind of good as a damage over time in fact this should almost be like a warlock theme card and once your blood is at a boil throw in the play yeti that's from that fucking or at least it makes me think of that warcraft 3 uh well i forget what it's called like where they do the whole kitchen uh what's the line it's the first line that i think inspired it ah i can't remember it's this whole fucking text post that somebody wrote that like makes everything a food reference have you sauced your mints arthas what is the first line that that starts that i have to consider this an act of seasoning no it's something else too i forget corpse bride five four five mana four four Battle Cry spent up to eight corpses. Summon a risen groom with stats equal to the amount. Okay, I kind of like that effect. And then one, one mana, one, one risen groom doesn't leave a corpse. So, huh. I don't know if it means that like every card in the game is going to just leave a corpse by default. How much you want to bet people are going to be complaining in the meta like crazy? Like, oh, this is overpowered. This is bullshit. Because the Death Knight in WoW was really overpowered. At least... I don't know. And during the level experience, it was bullshit. You could just like, you know, roll over people. I don't know so much at the at the higher level. I'm sure it was. I think XUC bragged about that. Like, oh, he was a, a gladiator as a death knight and everybody makes fun of him. But I mean, you could have done it. In fact, that's a funny overlap. He has like that schnizel mentality in a manner of speaking, like from Code Geass, where like he only plays a game that he can't lose when it comes to competitive play. Like he played... He played Death Knights in Wrath when they were considered overpowered and busted, but then he gets Gladiator. So, like, why didn't you play a Death Knight too if it was that easy? He could say. And then he plays uh, Winston Maid in Overwatch and becomes MVP of Overwatch League. It's like, well, then if it's so easy to play Winston, then you become MVP. So that's kind of a funny... That is kind of an absolutist tendency that we would talk about. Like a means argument. Well, if, if the means are available, why not use the best possible thing? Like with Shaq in basketball, people say that, oh, he's just bigger and stronger. Fine then. Like he, he won or he was so good because he was bigger and stronger than everybody else. So there's no shame in that, right? Use whatever you have available. Everybody else can do that too. Especially in like a physical sport, it's kind of a stupid argument to say, oh, being tall is unfair. Like uh, James Harden said that about, uh, about Giannis. Like, oh, he's just tall and this and that. But then imagine complaining about physical advantages in a physical sport. Like, you don't get <coughs> any special credit until undeath do us part. And once you're... That is actually funny. Because that's all I remember seeing when he would play Overwatch. is just like uh, Winston Main, Winston Main. Five mana, two, uh, two blood runes. Corpse Explosion. This is a classic ability. You even see this like in Diablo to some extent. Um, with the Necromancer or whatever. Detonate a corpse to deal one damage to all minions. If any are still alive, repeat this. Well, it's basically like Defile. How how original of an idea. What is... You now, wasn't Defile a Death Knight spell in the first place? It was not a Warlock spell. Defile was like an AoE that did uh, a certain amount of damage for Death Knights. So it's weird that they gave that one to Warlocks. What? It's not like they were using them anymore. I guess the rationale was like, oh, there was no Death Knight in the game, so they could justify doing that, but they might look back to regret that. They could have done the same effect, but they could have just called it something different. I like how some of the abilities in this game are actual names of abilities from the universe, like serious, you know, Corpse Explosion is an actual ability, respected. But other ones are like gimmicks, like, oh, you know, Corpses, whatever it was that... Habis Corpses is just like a stupid pun joke name. They should save that for the flavor text, but the name of the ability should be an actual ability like this. Like how many of these are meme names? Most of these are fine. Uh, Unholy Frenzy, Howling Blast. Yeah, none of these are, are stupid like that. <coughs> Habis Corpses, Asphyxiate, Vampiric Blood. Yeah, actually all these names are fine. So I actually don't understand... Uh, Uncraftable include. I don't understand how it works as far as... I guess we could just look in the expansion itself. Path of Artha. So they're going to be considered like separate. Uh, of course, this is to encourage you to... Uh, you would think Wild would include all of those though, but I guess not. 
the which ones did I not read? I read that, I read that. I'm assuming I saw everything except for what's going to be over five cost. Battle pl uh, gain plus one attack for each frost spell in your hand. Uh, now I won't even remember if I read all these, but I think so. No, I couldn't have because De Lady Death, Death Whisper is too far. <coughs> Yes, I'll know by the flavor tags. Mispronounces his name. That sticks with me more than the names of the actual card. I'll remember like boss quotes from WoW, but I won't remember what the boss itself was or what the mechanics were. Come and join us. I can reread that one. Northrun arm wrestling. Why is Lady Death Whisper that far out then if he was like over here? Plague Strike, we saw. Often do his shoulder. Give a minion. Oh no, it's not further. It's actually closer because that would have been on like the maybe the third page because this was still on the first way destroy it okay we saw that then two corpses why, why is this so differently organized it's actually a hairball we read that deal three damage to enemy and freeze it for death knights yelling really loudly is a valid attack strategy I don't know why they're separate in like that. They've never done that before, I don't think. Because even if it's from like, uh, I don't know what they're doing with it. Just trying to force people to buy microtransactions. You just wait, I'll be there 10 more years. Okay, we read that. Yelling is <coughs> valid attack strategy, group hug. I don't remember reading the flavor text on this though. This omelet is death fromage. Copy all frost spells in your hand. Uh, we saw that, we saw that, we saw that. Absolute thrill. So anything above five, though, we didn't see because it wasn't there. And once your blood is... It's weird that they did it so down the line like that. Six mana, three frost runes, five, five, undead. Morrow manipulator, gnome. They'll add that one day too. Like the races of every card will somehow <laughs> be a relevant mechanic too. Uh, battle cry, spend up to five corpses, deal two damage to a random enemy for each. That could be very strong. Also buffs your calcium by a thousand milligrams. Rare. Oh, look at them. Look at them do the, exactly what I said they... Okay. Seven mana, five, three. Frostmourne, summon every minion killed by this weapon. Okay. Will they be considered undead then? Since they've introduced that as such a key mechanic. Death Knights, Frostmourne. <laughs> What's next? Blood Noon. So it's the exact same card. Yeah, why not just have all the cards then from the, you know, all the Death Knight cards generated by Arphis or the Lich King. Just let me play them because they're definitely not in here. They wouldn't have all this rune shit to do with them at least. I kind of forget what they are even though we were just playing as that like yesterday. <laughs> I love the one that gives everything can be targeted by spells and hero powers. That's so stupid to do that. Like, hmm... It doesn't make any sense that it would be generated by... Okay, whatever. Seven mana, Frostworm's Fury. Frost. Of course, they already have cards like Cinderagosa in the game, so it does kind of make it a little bit harder to find lore characters. Deal five damage, freeze all enemy minions. Coming to 5-5 five, five, Frostworm. 5-5, five, five, okay. Undead and Dragon at the same time. Interesting. Have we seen things with like multiple tags like that? In the whole history of the game, I feel like that's a very awkward appearance that I have never seen before. Terrible destruction, but minty, fresh breath. <coughs> Scourge, nine mana, legendary spell. Two unholy runes, the Scourge. Fill your board with random undead. Okay, that's always the fun effect, I guess. You speak of justice, of cowardice, I will show you the justice of the grave and the true meaning of fear. Okay. Only way to get a serious piece of flavor text is if you... Now, I wonder if Path of Arthas obviously will give you... No, it'll only give you Death Knight cards. Okay. <coughs> so, which ones... Have... Why they make it so hard to figure this shit out? Okay, we read that. We read that. I see a lot of dead people. We read that. Giant en enemy spider. Horde took Ice Crown Citadel. It's not like they're using them anymore. Okay. This one was not there. So seven mana, three. Yeah, why not just do Ashbringer instead of 
<laughs> recycling Frostmourne. That's kind of stupid design. I don't like that. Because it's them, like, they want to have it both ways. They released the Lich King, obviously, way back when, and they gave you Frostmourne then, which you could have criticized then. And if I said that, then people would say, oh, no, it's okay. You know, you don't complain about it. Just enjoy Frostmourne. But now they'll use it here, right, for the exact reason that I said they shouldn't have done that because now it feels cheap. At least you could make a different version of it, I guess. Alexandros, Mograin, 7-7, seven, seven, Undead. For the rest of the game, Battle Cry, deal 3 damage to your opponent at the end of your turns. That's a little bit too, too good. That's kind of a dumb effect. At least it should have some requirement. Like if you have at least 10 corpses or whatever, then you get to do it. It just does it. So you're, this is one of those, like, you really have to go out of your way for that one. Seven mana, seven, seven. What a horrible value to just deal, do a persistent effect. <clears throat> eight mana, one blood rune, bone guard commander, eight, eight undead. On battle cry, ra raise up to six corpses as one, two risen footmen with taunt. Uh, risen footmen doesn't leave a corpse. This is, of course, a riff on the, like, the goldshire footmen, I suppose. <coughs> Commander and Hearthstone finally. Mo grain, more problems. Uh, eight mana, three blood rune, soul stealer. Battle cry, destroy all other minions. Gain one course. What the fuck? What is that? Effect. Eight mana, five, five. You get basically a twisting nether and a five, five. To boot. See, this is the kind of shitty card design that I don't like. This is such a stupid card. Power creep or whatever notwithstanding. This is dumb design. Eight mana five five. Soul Stealer. Three blood runes. Destroy all other minions. Gain one corpse for each. It's like you take exactly the text of another card, copy it, co copy paste it, and then add some other bonus effect. Right? Just give us twisting nether, but better. One gain one corpse for each enemy destroyed. Wanna see what destruction looks like? Here it is an undead form. It's your boy Soul Stealer. <laughs> So what I'd be more interested in are the Druid and the Mage cards to try to see if... So there's nothing really that had to do with Elusive, which I kind of thought there would be. Only because... Yeah, so everybody got that for free. Invincible is there. I'm kind of spoiling, even though... So I wonder if there'll be any kind of other overlap. Like if there's other cards you get only from the path. But I guess there can't be. Like for other classes. Because <clears throat> sometimes they would do that, I feel like, in the past gonna be basically just like one page for each class which isn't too bad so how would i know even if and when it comes out i guess it's gonna the best way to tell maybe is that uh for some reason i thought that this would be later and they would make you wait a day but i guess that would be the best indication so i actually have to wait another whole fucking morning to do this yeah i should not have even bothered fucking trying to do a whatever so let's look at the rest of these of course, like I said, the only two classes I have an interest in would be Mage and Druid to do uh, any sort of <coughs> new shit with. So hopefully there is something that's like, give me a 1-1 one -one with a battle cry. For the rest of the, ga rest of the game, all your minions can't be targeted by spells and hero powers. Or like all minions can't be targeted, including theirs, because I wouldn't care as much about that. So force the game to be on the board. Now that's a fun idea for a card. One mana, two, one. Fierce Outsider. I still don't know what the fucking hero power does. <clears throat> Should we just look? Like, uh, I think the way to tell would be on this thing. They're giving you as much as time, much time as possible to, uh... They're giving you as much time as possible to fucking pre-purchase the stuff still. So this is a two mana picture of a ghoul. So I did see that. Imagine being spoiled by the... It's not actually going to show me here. Maybe I will wait till my... Uh... Or no, it should show me in the sense of activating the... Uh... So it isn't a passive one like that generates corpses. It probably just gives you a couple corpse co counters or something. I don't know. Yeah, they seem to have missed a real opportunity. Not just because I'm a real fan of the elusive mechanic, but... There's not like a single card that really has to do with that. Anti-magic shell or, or something. 
one mana they're saving that for the mid expansion expansion like where they do the after two months they'll do like a mini you know set one mana two one fierce outsider like how can you dislike a business model or something so much but still enjoy the game so much i guess because if you're a free to play player you don't really care and you just you know it's free for me that's the beauty of it let other people pay for a game that i've played for a thousand plus hours and really enjoyed and i didn't even have to pay for it myself but i wouldn't have minded like i would have rather just paid 60 dollars at the beginning once for the game and then i'd be set but no they want to fucking milk it <clears throat> kind of let the whales finance the ship for you in a sense of there was some analogy like that i forget <laughs> what it is but like uh try to think of other games like that like oh fortnite you could play for thousands of hours and never spend a cent and enjoy it so what did you lose and games like this might not even have existed if it wasn't for that <clears throat> right like especially with indie games and whatnot uh you know a studio might not be, that that's especially true with like uh even games which aren't free to play but they're like uh, the forest right or they have like a tortured development cycle where like people do a fundraiser or like what's it called the uh whatever where like they do a kickstarter and they raise money for it you don't have to do that but then you can benefit from it once the game comes out so you can be like oh being a kickstarter supporter is stupid but oh you should still totally do it for that game that i want to play so that i don't have to you get the best of both worlds where you, you get to be a free-to-play player but you get to benefit for what all these clowns pay for anyway while criticizing it at the same time so would that make me a hypocrite for playing one of these games and i guess it wouldn't matter though because it doesn't cost me anything besides time one mana two one fierce outsider rush so basically the point is i've been doing two early morning streams to try to do this yesterday was kind of my fault because i was actually one day off with when it came out and i was too stupid to or too uh, wanting to not spoil anything that I didn't even want to look it up somehow I just misread that or had the wrong notion but it would be two mornings wasted doing this without even getting to play as it so I I should not have even bothered and I won't fucking ever do it again which I kind of didn't plan to anyway but this is part and how much you want to bet is gonna even after waiting the four hours or whatever, it's still not going to be there on time and it's still going to have bugs and crash and make you wait in a queue timer and all this other kind of crap. <coughs> it is the best way to kind of search for bugs though and kind of get some crazy interaction that nobody's ever seen before. Okay, one mana, two, one, fierce outsider. Rush, your next outcast spell card costs one less. <coughs> Like, if you stop breaking stuff, you wouldn't have to stay outside. I almost don't even care about the other classes of cards, but I'll just read them. <coughs> It'll either disconnect me, I bet, or you would think that some notification would pop up. Unless I get caught in some kind of limbo where, like, it did come out, but because I'm already in the game and probably nobody else bothers to be, right, they wouldn't even bother to kick me off or, or it won't even change. I'll just be, like, caught in place. One mana, unleash fell. They'll just delete my fucking account. Deal one damage to all enemies. Mana thirst four with life steal. What, what the fuck is mana thirst? A bonus if you have X mana crystals. If you have four, that does that mean four exactly or probably at least four? <coughs> Deal one damage to all enemies. Mana thirst four with life steal. Okay. Why'd you put it on the leash in the first place? Two mana mark of scorn. So I like how some of these spells don't still have like any kind of uh, type attached to them. Draw a card if it's. I mean that was kind of the classic final encounter between uh, Illidan and, and Arthas. Even a weakened Arthas, even one you know who is like having headaches and and shit, like his power is waning the whole time. He was still able to beat Illidan, which almost didn't make sense. So I think they have some passage in. Uh, one of the books or whatever that talks about how it was the Frostmourne that somehow won him the fight. It wasn't Arthas. Like, it just had some... They, they did some retcon kind of stupid explanation to try to say why a fight that probably shouldn't have ended that way ended that way. Of course, he doesn't finish him off. I guess because he's in such a hurry to meet with Nerizol, who we've forgotten even exists in the lore, apparently. <coughs> That's what I don't like about fans, is like, they'll go along with anything. 
So if you had said that before, like, oh, they should totally write out Nerzul. Nerzul's a crappy character. They'd be like, oh, fuck that. Why Why would we do that? Nerzul's great. And then once they write out Nerzul, they're like, oh, well, it's fine that they did that. Arthas is cool. Arthas is awesome. It's like, why can't you just have both the way that it was originally intended? That was the whole point of, that's the final line in the Frozen Throne, right? We are one. Like, not... We are one for now, for a little bit, until the writers decide that I'm not useful anymore and they want to make Arthur the one big bad. And they didn't add that superfluous line afterwards. Draw a card. If it's not a minion, deal three damage to the lowest health enemy. Be cool if that was a way to just kill <coughs> if he's the only enemy. Because it, does, it doesn't say just minion. Threat level who? Mark of Scorn. Two mana, Wretched Exile. After you play an outcast card, add another outcast card to your hand. <clears throat> what does that even mean? The way that you become outcast is if you... Oh, one that would, would have the effect. But like, isn't it like the leftmost or the rightmost <clears throat> card? So how would a card inherently be the leftmost or rightmost if it's not already there in the first place? If you're cold, they're cold. Let your wretches inside. It shows you how much I really played as a demon hunter. <clears throat> that I don't really even care about that mechanic at all. It is kind of a stupid one. That kind of just rewards you for top decking or I guess for keeping one in, <clears throat> in your hand for a long time. <clears throat> four mana, Feldurai Warband. Looks like a weird picture. Deal four damage if your deck has no minions. Some... Why would your deck have no minions though? Summon four 1-1 one -one Illidaris with Rush. There must be some archetype <clears throat> for Demon Hunters this time that for some reason, you play without minions. That's so weird. Pellerin, I made you a friendship bracelet. What? I said a war band, not wristband. Four mana. Pellerin, the Forgotten. <clears throat> Battle cry. Add a random... No, add an outcast card to the left and right sides of your hand. They cost two less. You'll be guaranteed to get the effects, but at least if you play them that turn. Flavor text, because he forgot it, I guess. Not them just being lazy with it. And the way it's written almost makes it seem like it's a typo with no no capitalization or no punctuation. Four mana, Soul Stealer's Scythe. Start of game, consume three different minions in your... See, I'm glad I didn't already do all this reading because then <coughs> I wouldn't have anything to do while I wait for this shit to come out. I should almost just play something else altogether while I wait. This is a perfect example for like a dual game kind of stream. I'll pay, play Spellbreak for the first time because I never did, and it's about to go out of fucking uh, commission in January, I guess, or next year. <coughs> or I'll just play, play fucking chess. Play one secondary turn-based fucking game while you wait for another. Amazing. Consume three different minions in your deck. Leave behind souls that discover them. <coughs> Bound soul. Discover a minion consumed by it. So it's just a one mana spell. I thought it would be like a minion that you have, that once it dies, the death rattle is to do that. Would you like the, those souls for here or to go? Five mana, deal with the devil. Summon two, three, three fell fiends with life steal. If your deck has no other minions, summon another. What is this deck without minions thing though? Why would you play like that? <clears throat> three mana, three, three fell fiend. Fine, three Falfiends, final offer. It's funny to see what cards are actually end up being censored by whatever, by because they want to appeal to certain markets. Like, uh, the Succubus should have stayed, at least in the West. I guess it's just to keep it uniform. But, like, if you're playing in the Americas, nobody in the Americas is bothered by the Succubus, but it must be in Asian markets or some other market. That's fine that they say, oh, we have to replace it with the Fell Hunter. It's just like of all the violent imagery, like you can show murder and death and undeath and all these twisted concepts and fell magic and the occult, but you can't show a succubus showing a little cleavage. Like this is true as a, like a media trope in general, right? Sex is bad, but violence is okay, right? You can, you can have the hero of a story kill dozens of people, blow up cars, do all these crazy stunts and, you know, explosions and this and that but you can't have you can't show a little cleavage you can't show nudity so that's what they're really saying murder and killing people is not as bad as nipples and nudity it's an interesting interpretation seven mana vengeful walloper rush costs one less for each outcast you play this game 
<coughs> I guess because one is real and one isn't, right? They're not actually killing people, but you would actually be seeing somebody's real whatever, but seven mana, vengeful wall per five five demon. Rush costs one less for each outcast you've cast this game. <coughs> <coughs> seems weird seven mana five five rush if you can't beat them beat with them what i don't even get it oh like he's what okay i get it from the name nine mana brutal annihilant that's a very nice picture taunt rush demon it's always interesting seeing de seeing pit lords associated with demon hunters because that was the whole you know rivalry that they had where Illidan first beat Mac Theridon, then he survives, then he becomes the new Lord of Outlander. <clears throat> Whatever. Haunt Rush 9-9. After this minion survives damage, deal the amount to the enemy hero. That's kind of cool. Sometimes problems can be solved by throwing everything you've got at it. This is not one of those times. <coughs> yeah, I'd be very interested to see Mage and Druid stuff. Does everybody really get the exact same number of cards? I feel like that's not always the case. So there don't seem to be any hero cards in this, which is kind of lame. I've always grown to just find those so exciting and fun. <coughs> Unless I'm somehow just missing them, but I don't see a single one. Or at least give one class one of them just to, you know, make it feel unfair. Like I still remember that from the Dr. Boom hero card for Warriors. Everybody else was pissed. Like, I think that was the first time they did it. We're like... That was the first one after the Knights of the Frozen Throne. So everybody was like uh, jealous. Like, oh, how come they get one, but we don't? I thought every expansion, everybody should get one. But well, that would be <clears throat> maybe a little bit too much. So like, it's more like every expansion, one class only would get one. Like you would get Hagatha for Shaman's one expansion. Then the next one you'd get uh, some other... I, I forget actually what sequence they did them in. <clears throat> Lingering Zombie, 1-1. One, one. I almost don't even care about most of these clans. I guess there's not that many. 1 mana, 1-1, one, one, Undead, Lingering Zombie. Death Rattle, summon a 1-1 one, one Disarmed Zombie with Death Rattle. Summon a 1-1 one, one Zombie. 1-1, 1-1, 1-1, 1-1. A one, one. Uh, Disarmed Zombie. Summon a 1-1 one, one Zombie. So being disarmed doesn't seem to hurt him too much. Why did it have to be a Torin specifically? <coughs> Two mana, chitinous plating. Gain four armor. <clears throat> At the start of your turn, gain four more armor. Not really very... This would go with my, my armor druid thing. I made like this really fun, but very slow troll deck back in the day. I think it was around... A lot of my decks actually came out around... Uh, Knights of the Frozen Throne originally, just for whatever reason, but it was like a very slow paced armor gain deck that sort of just decked them out with uh, all the armor gain cards. And obviously, you have Malfurion, you had a Tree of Life. It was like a super stall out deck with no other purpose than that, just to frustrate them. It probably weren't, wouldn't work as well now, or you'd have to like really add a lot of other stuff over time. <coughs> Because too many decks can deal with stuff like that now. Especially with the 40 card bullshit. That kind of ruins stuff like that. Durable, detachable, and dishwater, dish, dishwasher safe. How much you want to bet I'm going to wait all this time. And then I'll be the one person who can't get in. Because just... I'll still have to wait in a queue though. Like everybody else. Or at least if you're in this long and this early. They should give you a special pass to make, guarantee that you get in. Nerubian Flyer. I am happy to see so many Nerubians. Because over the whole history and course of the game, right, there haven't really been that many. Nerubian Flyer. And I love the, you know, 5-5s, five 5-5s, five uh, <coughs> five five, uh, ones that increase spell cost by 2. Nerubian Flyer. If a friendly undead dying after your last turn, summon a 2-2 two -two Nerubian. Friendly Undead. Now, it doesn't say for each one. It just says summon one, I think, period. Undead Air Miles only cover Northrend and the surrounding coast. Nerubian Skitterer. Due to Undead. Two mana Wither. Very cool picture. Choose a minion. Each <coughs> Friendly Undead deals one attack and health from it. Each Friendly Undead. Huh. That seems a little bit too strong. 
Because it'll kill. Because you, obviously you can do it on an enemy minion. <coughs> so you could like kill something. Take a 10 mana 10 10. And steal. I guess it just requires you have a full board. That seems very strong. The opponent's minion can't live with or without you. That's actually pretty good. That's my favorite card between the picture, the flavor text, and the effect so far. Five mana, beetle man. See, just none of this stuff synergizes with what I was thinking was going to be a theme of this expansion. Which is uh, sort of anti-spell stuff, elusive stuff. There's not been one single elusive minion so far or anything to do with death knights that had to do with anti-magic shell or whatever. <coughs> Five mana beetle man. So you choose one, gain 12 armor, or gain two 3-3 three, three beetles with taunt. Not as cool as fucking spreading plague or whatever. That would be the really, this is a direct correlation to that. Beetle man see beetle man see beetle man see beetle juice reference. Three mana three three beetle with taunt. That's pretty lame. Five mana for two three three beetles? What the fuck is that? That actually sucks. This is a garbage card. Yeah, why not just do Spreading Plague for, I guess, because it's not standard. Am I missing something, or this just kind of sucks dick as a card? Gain 12 armor, which there are other cards which do basically almost the same thing. It would only be good, I guess, if you got both effects together, like with your little Assyrian tier and whatnot. <clears throat> Summon two 3-3 three, three needles with Taunt for five. I just don't see that as being remotely good. Five mana, Elder Nadox. Now, was was this guy not from the... Uh, he was the boss in front of the dungeon with... I forget the name of it, even. Right, with the Nubarak. Battle cry, destroy a friendly undead. Your minions gain its attack. 5-4. For an undead, is an Elder the least or most dead? Destroy a friendly undead. Your minions gain its attack. All of them. Some of these effects are actually quite insane. The uh, Wither and this are quite good. Um, destroy friendly undead. Okay. 5 mana, 5, 4. For an undead, is it, is an elder or the least the most dead? Who's been dead the most time? Or who is... Oh, that is actually kind of a clever thing. Like, who was alive the longest before they died? Or so they've been dead the least amount of time? Or they've been dead for the longest? <clears throat> Six mana, unending swarm. Resurrect all friendly minions that cost two or less. <coughs> that could have some interesting uses. Swarm, 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 swarm. Okay, we get it. Seven mana, under king. Six, six, undead. Rush, battle cry, and death rattle. Gain six armor. There are some interesting things. They just could commit to the armor druid. Because at that time when I did it, it wasn't really something that people were doing. Like, there were some armor considerations, but, like, to commit fully to it, like, where you, you didn't have any win condition, all you were trying to do was gain as much armor as possible <clears throat> at a time when that wasn't really easy to do, and you had, like, all these cards that didn't seem that good, but you just kind of wanted to saw your opponent out. Behold the Underking, I'm always beneath you, but nothing is beneath me. I hereby declare war on peace and happiness. Soon all will tremble before me. I actually don't know what that's a reference to, but... Probably some line from a movie. <clears throat> I'm always beneath you, but nothing is beneath me. Imagine if they just came up with it and make it seem like it's a quote from something. Eight mana, seven, seven, Anubricon. Battle cry gain eight armor. This turn, your minions cost armor instead of mana. Oh yeah, I, somehow I saw this before. I don't know how. I did. This is one card that I actually was aware of. Who's that? A noob, I reckon. <clears throat> Maybe that eventually was, uh, initially is what they named it after for some reason. Like, it's actually a name pun, like in Phoenix, right? This is a very cool effect, though. Gain 8 armor. Actually, it makes me almost want to do that and just make a better version of the armor druid thing. Because there's so many benefits that you would get. That is such a weird... Thing that was not a deck before. Maybe in the years since, people have done decks like that, but... <clears throat> I don't even really really have a lot of those cards anymore, though. Gain 8 armor. This turn, your minions cost health instead of mana, or armor instead of mana. <coughs> 8 mana, 4, 6. Crypt Keeper, so it better have a good effect. I'm not even looking, but that's a shitty fucking stat line. Taunt costs 1 less for each... Oh. 
well that makes it that you'll never actually have to pay eight so it doesn't have something that it doesn't have a crazy effect that justifies costing eight it just doesn't actually cost eight Costs one less for each armor you have how many crypts would a crypt keeper keep if a crypt keeper could creep keep crypts okay it did get me with a tongue twister there so you have how many cards for each one ted 10 cards 10 cards it's like one of those phone upgrade things, right? They'll release the iPhone 15 with one slight new feature. It has a reflective screen that does something funny on it. And then the next month, they'll release the 16 with a slightly new feature. That's what they do with the mini sets. Like they'll, <coughs> they'll hold back a lot of the really interesting cards from this expansion for the midway point. So like you may as well not even bother playing till then. So I still don't actually even know what the hero power does because I just have still only seen the picture of it. I guess that'll be the one remaining surprise when we uh, actually get into a game. <coughs> so we're at Hunter now. It does kind of make me want to try that uh, armor deck again. Uh, of course, they have all this stupid shit now that, like, you can gain infinite armor, like a billion armor, from all the bees and stuff. Yeah, see, they kind of ruined that because it used to be, like, a, a niche thing. Nobody was playing like that because it wasn't even good, which is my specialty of making decks that do that. Uh, so what were the cards that related to armor? Because there were quite a few. Yeah, that Blizzard sees that video of the guy doing the billion armor thing. I forget his channel. And they're like, oh, that seems... Completely cool. Let's add even more armor cards to make it more broken instead of fixing it. Because I think you can still do that in wild. <coughs> I forget exactly how you do it. So this has to do with armor. This is very good. This has to do with armor, although this is shit. You have at least one, two, and... This is quite good. I guess not a ton, but I mean, actually, considering how few cards there are, almost half of them have to do with armor. That's kind of interesting. <clears throat> I guess that's what people would associate with, with Nerubians as armor gain, but... I kind of played with these too much already. Yeah, I guess I was wrong, though, in my prediction about the elusive stuff. That's kind of too bad. Okay, Hunters, gonna be something to do with Sylvanas, I bet. There was some Sylvanas portrait or whatever, the Ranger, which is obviously <clears throat> very predictable. How would you even know like which ones are from the most recent thing? It'd be kind of hard to tell just by looking through these. Like there should be a, another Frostlich Jaina reference type of thing. It'll be obviously alphabetical order, so maybe one of these Kel'Thuzad ones could be. The sun lights my path to glory. I haven't seen like hardly any of these ever. There's some really cool ones that just nobody has. Maybe because everybody is smart enough not to buy fucking microtransactions in the first place. This actually doesn't have as many repeats as well. There are a few too many Janas. Are you looking for a little extra magic? <laughs> Makes her seem a little bit too young there with the voice. Almost doesn't even seem like the same voice actress. Imagine this is like your the last leg of your career. Voicing fucking hero portraits in Hearthstone is the last gig that you ever get. Your career hit rock bottom, but you happen to originally voice the, the character, so <laughs> this is what you get. <clears throat> Because it's not like at the beginning of WoW, they had like the highest, you know, it, it wasn't going to be like a big name actor who was doing some of this stuff. But they did do a pretty good job with a lot of the early boss quotes in WoW. Yeah, I was just kind of seeing like which, uh, I guess this one just stands out because it's... I have faith in the strength and will of the Kueldori. Maybe this has been out for longer than I realized, but this clearly is... Like the, the images almost look like they're taken from... Warcraft Reforged, right? Just the art style. She's, she's all serious, but Arthas is smiling like a fucking clown there. I don't like that one at all. Nothing Look at his expression. Me 
from having my revenge. <laughs> Doesn't he look kind of derpy? And the sword looks almost a little bit too big. This just looks too cartoonish for me. Imagine spending real money on that. If you gave me a Nurzul one in the armor, I would do that though. <clears throat> Ricochet shot for one. Deal one damage to three random enemies. Simple geometry. Actually, I find it quite complex. I don't get what the joke is there. Simple geometry. <clears throat> Arcane quiver for two. Oh, these are both. Yeah, of course. That's that's going to be the only spell type that uh, hunters are known for from vanilla is just uh, arcane shot. And then uh, serpent sting would be poison. Or like, what would that be considered in this game? I guess it wouldn't be considered anything. <clears throat> arcane quiver. Discover a spell from your deck. If it's arcane, give it spell damage plus one. Quiver and fear. The Lich King. Okay, me. <clears throat> Two... <laughs> this is actually kind of a funny line. Yeah, he said Quiver and Fear to Sylvanas and regretted it. Now, Sylvanas actually had Arthas beat, right? She used, like, some poisonous arrow to stun him. Uh, stun him. And so that was it. It was over. And then Kel'Thuzad saves him. So that was kind of a plus one for her. Conjured Arrow, two mana. Now, was that when, when he was a Banshee already, or was that before? I can't actually remember what point that takes place in the story. It must have been when she was a banshee, when like sort of taking revenge. <clears throat> or yeah, yeah, I think it was uh, after. Deal two damage to a minion. Mana thirst six. Draw that many cards if you have at least six mana. Now I don't know if that means if you have it total or if you have it at the time. <clears throat> mana crystals would pro. It doesn't say they have to be full. I guess <clears throat> kind of rewarding you for nothing. Deal two damage. So imagine doing this like with Malagos and you could draw a fucking but <laughs> who would do that just for that? I even did that in a deck. Like I did a Malagos double arcane shot with like Thrasian. So how much damage would that really have been? Like plus five, plus five, like fourteen at that point would have been actually a cool OTK, maybe with something else too. Especially if you could somehow reduce Malagos's cost, like create a 1-1 one, one copy of Malagos for one and then play that plus double kill command, double arcane shot. I don't quite remember doing that, but we just call them cursors. Two mana, two, two, scourge, tamer, craft a custom zombie. It's one of my favorite mechanics ever the hero card it's weird that they didn't do any hero cards though at least as <coughs> far as i've seen just use the death knight ones i guess just play in wild you know they haven't used this mechanic ever since then in any other card so it's kind of, this is kind of an earned one that like it fits with the mechanics without feeling contrived or recycled <coughs> scourge tamer 2-2 two, two. custom zombies he's a hunter and a gatherer Two mana, two, two, deal one damage. That could almost be a druid card, too, for whatever <clears throat> reason, with their affinity with bees. Shock Spitter, deal one damage, improved by your hero attacks this game. That's kind of shitty, though. It should be just your hero powers, maybe, would make more sense. That blue raspberry candy was very sour. <coughs> Silver Moon Fat. Far Strider. I can't believe there's no reference to Elusive whatsoever. I just kind of have that correlation. Two mana, two, three. Battle Cry, give all arcane spells in your hand. Spell damage plus one. Surprisingly nearsighted. Yeah, really. Like, I was joking about how hunters would be associated with the arcane spells, but that really is what you're getting here. Even druids to an extent. I guess it's split between nature and arcane there. Like Moonfire, Starfire. <clears throat> Is that really going to be something that people are using? Three mana, three, four. I guess I'm too nearsighted to see whatever meta shit they'll do with it. Alderaan Brightwing. Give all arcane... Oh, really, dude? You're going to beat this like a dead horse. Give all arcane spells in your deck spell damage plus one. Okay. That makes me think more of Dalaran than Silver Moon in the background. I wanted to generate a legendary, but I held the wrong Brightwing. 
Who is saying that? Like a troll is saying that? No, okay. <clears throat> three mana, three, four. Keen eye spotter. Whenever your hero attacks a minion, set its health to one. Your hero. So there's an emphasis on arcane spells for some reason. And there's an emphasis on your hero doing attacks, I guess. Both of which are not really things that I would want to do as a hunter anyway. <coughs> no, Rex are not the face. The minion right there. Yeah, that one right there. No, Rex are no. Apparently, she wasn't on duty when uh, fucking Sylvanas got killed by Arthas, though. Four mana, Eversong Portal. What is Eversong? Just Eversong Woods. Summon one four four links with rush, improved by spell damage. These are really what hunters are going to be doing. Focusing on spell damage and arcane damage and attacking with weapons. <clears throat> four four links with rush. So, okay. That doesn't really seem like it would be that good. In retrospect, it's impressive that they had the lynxes just ready to go. Six mana, hope of quell the loss. After your hero, what was the weapon in uh, the Sunwell? I think that one's already been released as something. I forget what it's called. Like Thor at all the star, <coughs> the star is fury, right? Isn't that already a card? It, like fill your hand with spells or whatever. Yeah. Equip Thor at all the stars fury. It doesn't actually show you on here what it does though. How stupid is that? Doesn't it normally generate a portrait? Rise of Shadows. Kind of forgot about that. Good things come in threes, Windrunner, Sisters, and Arrows of Thor at all. <clears throat> I think that's what it does at least. Fill your But that wouldn't make sense, because you would just equip it. It's so weird that it doesn't actually show it to you there. Hope of Health Loss. Hey, give me a minute. I just need to load my, uh, no. After your hero attacks, your minions gain plus one, plus one, wherever they are. That was the whole thing with, uh, Star's Fury is that you didn't need ammo for it, right? It was like a hunter's dream come true. It would just automatically <coughs> generate ammo, I think, at a time when the whole game wasn't just casualized like that, where you don't even have to worry about it in the first place. It's one of those philosophical things about games is like where it's the opposite of life in so many ways like you would do things that you wouldn't normally do right like on a moral level you can get away with doing things you wouldn't normally do but also you kind of want to be restricted in ways that you wouldn't want to be restricted in life right like you want to start at the bottom and work your way <clears throat> way up you want things to cost resources and time and effort you want to have to manage things right? Like whether it be ammo or resources or durability, you kind of want restrictions and you want a certain amount of uh, arduous or tedious things to have to deal with because it makes you feel more immersed in the world. It makes it feel more real. There is kind of a weird psychological ideation with that, right? You don't want things to be too easy and just handed to you. Sort of like the <clears throat> burden of consequence argument. After your hero attacks, give your minions plus one, plus one. Wherever they are, though, is kind of good. Hey, give me a, this would almost work with the elusive thing to an extent. Give me like a little miscaller effect. Give me a minute. I just need to load my nope. <coughs> I don't know if this is a real weapon. It must be at some point. Okay, so mage, obviously, we already looked at druid, and it makes me want to play the armor druid less than it wants me to actually do elusive stuff. There's nothing that really overlaps with that, so I'm getting cocked pretty hard. Or maybe they'll save that for the middle of the expansion uh, mini set. <clears throat> so the reward track will be obviously reset, too. And I never ended up playing my fucking uh, Halloween arena, even though I do kind of like it. I'm just surprised it lasted this fucking long. Or maybe that's what I should do here. And of course, it will make Arena fun just to, you know, try out the cards and stuff. <clears throat> but I don't think I'll even want to do that. Or maybe I'll do it in Arena as a Death Knight. But the problem is you can't guarantee that you'll be able to. Because you'll have to, you know, maybe resign a couple. Before you get that as an option of the three. 
That would be kind of a fun thing to do, but... That is, like, the classic way to just, like, do an arena. That's almost like a hard mode challenge, right? Like, one of my formats. Do an arena, but you have to choose a card from the new expansion if it's available, right? I think that's stuff that Trump and Crip or whatever might have tried to... I don't think Crypt would do stuff like that. He's too serious and hardcore. But maybe it's just, like, a fun challenge. They would, uh... Who was it that I beat in an arena game that I distinctly remember? Uh, I think it was... It wasn't Trump. I think it was... What was it? Amaz. Yeah, I beat Amaz. I remember that matchup exactly. You would think I would have beaten them all at one point over time and probably lost to them numerous times. <clears throat> I don't know what any of those people are doing now, even. Like, do they still play Hearthstone? Is that the only thing that they do? Because that would be kind of sad after all this fucking time. Like, Asmongold not knowing when to let go of a, a dying game. <clears throat> Okay, where was I? <clears throat> so I like the emphasis on armor stuff. <clears throat> yeah, that is kind of fun, but it's a little expensive to wear. By the time you do it, it might already be kind of too late. It just makes me want to play as Rexar again, actually. Uh, just fucking awesome, awesome hero card effect. That's got to be the most fun one. Just to be able to make like kind of whatever you want. Even if it's... I won't say it wasn't even that good, but I don't remember seeing hunters that much at that time. Maybe just hunter decks in general weren't that great. I would just see Jaina all the fucking time, too much. Arcane Bolt, one mana, deal two damage. <coughs> mana Thirst, eight, deal three damage instead. Really? That's not even that worthwhile. Like, huh. One mana for three damage. Just wait until I have eight mana. I'll do slightly more. <clears throat> One mana, Arcane Worm. And I thought these were considered beasts, though. Isn't the Mana Worm considered a beast? I swear it is. Of course, it won't show up here, but... Oh, for some reason, I, I had that as a beast. I'm not really seeing anything that would create some kind of crazy combination for a while, but it would take some time, I guess, to figure it out. And people probably already have kind of crazy ideas ready, though. <coughs> Who played this game like fucking every day and stuff. Chess is my new fucking Hearthstone, where I used to play Hearthstone almost every day <coughs> when I was streaming and whatnot way back when. So then for a while I did that. Yeah, I never thought I would do that again where I would play like the same game every single day for a while. But I did that with chess from like, I don't, I forget exactly from when. Or I guess there were some days that I skipped, but just as like a general tradition. It was like from somewhere from like January of this year till like August. <coughs> Something like that. Arcane Worm, one mana, one, two. Add an Arcane Bolt to your hand. Arcane Bolt on you, on your cow, on your whole family. Two mana magic. Yeah, that's like one of the least threatening things you could say because it sucks so much. It only does two to three damage. Two mana. Wait, but it does it to anything, I guess. So this is another Malagos. Uh, you wouldn't do it for the eight mana effect, but you could do like two of these with Malagos coin or something. Thrasian. <clears throat> That's what's so good about, like, Arcane Shot or uh, Moonfire or something. Just that it can hit face, too. So you like the fact that it does less damage and costs less. <clears throat> just so you can do multiple of them together. So imagine if you had four of these and you could somehow do it with Malagos on the next turn. Because you would have two of them in your deck and then you would generate two of them from this. So how would you be able to play them all, though? Oh, I get, that is actually beautiful. That is a wild. We were complaining, oh, there's not enough wild stuff. That's cool. That right there is a cool combo. Even if there's better, probably ways to do it. Have four of these in your hand with the Rassian. So they'll all cost zero. And then you do Malagos and you can do fucking... It, it would automatically have the benefit <clears throat> of the Mana Thirst thing. So it'll do 8, 16, 24, 32. Which would be an OTK under normal circumstances, but some of these people will still have 40 fucking health by then. 
or do a uh, play breaker so armor won't be an issue. That is a cool combo. Huh. I don't even have Malago, so do I? Unfortunately. I thought I did actually for some reason, but then I probably disenchanted him just like how I disenchant everything to break my collection. If you do Thrasian, you're not doing it for Malagos, you're doing it for the other stuff. That would actually be 32 damage. That is actually kind of cool. I have this one, which is just a, apparently a core card. This core thing was so stupid. We, it makes people, people feel dumb for crafting stuff over the years. Because it's like, you would have had to spend spend so much dust on a lot of the cards that you had, but then now they give them to everybody for free. <clears throat> and they won't even let you disenchant them. They should always do that. If you were, were stupid enough to have crafted like one of the... I don't know, any one of the cards that everyone is given now, of which plenty of them were legendaries, you should at least be able to disenchant it and get your dust back. Or maybe they did give you like a dust rebate, but I don't think so. Like how when they change a card, they adjust <coughs> the dust value. So maybe when they added it to core only at that time, they would have given you some kind of special benefit. Two mana, three, two Magister's Apprentice. Arcane spells cost one less. If, so both hunters and oh I, I kind of finally understand why that makes sense because arcane was added as a tree I guess it didn't really affect hunters that much that I remember but was aim shot and stuff considered arcane because I feel like if it was considered an element I guess it would have been but you just think of arcane shot that way but yeah most of the <coughs> uh the arcane blast and the whole arcane tree was added in wrath how could i not remember that being the mage fan that i was because yeah for the longest time arcane was just like an ancillary thing that didn't have an identity of its own the only offensive arcane spells were arcane explosion and arcane missiles right so imagine being arcane dps in uh actually i think i did try to do that for a little bit arcane dps in in Vanilla was virtually impossible to do, and in Wrath or in BC, I don't remember too much what they added. They added slow. I kind of like it having that identity though. So Arcane was never about doing damage. It was always about manipulating stuff and kind of debuffs and just effects and like augment augmenting other things, mana regen or your mana pool and stuff like that. Or just your crit. Presence of mind was obviously fun. What was the last thing in Arcane and Vanilla? It wasn't... I don't think it was presence of mind. I think that was still the second to last thing. <clears throat> you go from that to something that's like that blue... Uh, whatever. Like the electricity. And it just increases like your damage by 30% or something. Of all spells. Right? That was actually the final one. It wasn't presence of mind. I forget what it's called. If this is the work I'll be doing, maybe I don't want to be just like you someday. <clears throat> but that's like a paralegal complaining about being the lawyer, right? Who the lawyer makes the paralegal do all the work. You kind of do want to be like them just to, have, to remove the need to do that kind of work. Two mana, one, three, elemental, prismatic elemental, discover a spell from any class. It costs one less. Disappointed that they were rejected from the Magical Guardian tryouts. <clears throat> three mana Arc Splitter. Three, two, add two Arcane Bolts to your hand. They're kind of beating certain things like a dead horse here. Like the Druid is just all about armor. Hunter is just focused on Arcane spells. Mage is two. It's kind of a bit too much of the same thing. But then again... So, the, the other Malagos is not... A standard card so just because I'm thinking of that doesn't mean it's something that people will be doing right but because that makes it so much easier to get to the four count that I was kind of worried about might be difficult to do that is very very cool so maybe I'll do that instead of anything to do with death knights that's the first thing that comes to my mind I'll make all the cards that give you arcane bolts and then you'll do Thrasian and then you'll do Malagos Right, that seems like a cool, fun idea, even though it's kind of very obvious and and basic. So you at least have two of them base, you have four of them from here, and possibly... Now that's only when he's on the field, right? So you, you won't necessarily be able to do that. If you have six of them, I guess you could do 
five of them and eh, that's kind of shitty or you could do all of them but yeah that kind of doesn't work with such a shitty low cost low damage spell and the the mana thirst is kind of lame it should be like do double like do four affected it should say do double affected by spell damage too so then they would do fucking uh so it wouldn't be a base amount so it would do 10 or no yeah no wait it, it would do 14 because it would do seven and then double yeah i'm coming up with an interaction that they wouldn't have even thought about because they don't really care about wild it's kind of like an excuse format right if something is busted in wild they'll be like oh just don't play wild that's the whole point right which i'm even fine with i just love wild as a format in general like i played wild until wild came out because you know at that point you could use any card in the game because it came out i forget actually actually when exactly it did come out but up until then they didn't restrict what you could use i don't think right except for just like saying a card is too strong period maybe like with sylvanas they might have done that <clears throat> just putting it like it's in its own category add two arcane balls to your hand so even though i think it is kind of boring that they're beating this one spell like a dead horse I will uh, do something cool with it. Arc Splitter. And it doesn't seem like it would be even that expensive. So I'll buy like the 14 packs, 15 packs that I was planning to. And just use that dust to make... First of all, I have to make Malago. So unfortunately... <coughs> so all my old school things that I already had. That I no longer do. Like all the Armor Druid cards. And Death Knight Malfurion. And... Uh, Malagos I know are disenchanted so it's a good example to show like how much I sabotage my own collection I would have like golden diamond copies of every card in the game by now you know many times over if I didn't just keep disenchanting my collection shrinking it down shrinking it down so many fucking times because you're cutting it down by a quarter by 75 percent every time you do that so basically it's just a very stupid thing to do and two again okay we get it shock splitter arc splitter what's next three mana vast wisdom discover two spells that cost three or less swap their costs okay i don't see why the swapping of costs would matter that much my wisdom is so vast that i can how about just switch how about swap the cost of two spells in your hand so then you could plan it out in such a way that you have like a pyroblast and an arcane missiles and and you switch it that way that would be kind of fun my wisdom is so vast that because and it wouldn't be too strong because it would be two random spells in your hand so you would really have to plan it out my wisdom is so vast that i can count up to three four mana energy shaper three mana three five <clears throat> Transform all spells in your hand into ones that cost two more. They keep their original cost. Okay, that's kind of a fun thing. The idea, there should be actually a lot of cards like this that mimic the evolution effect, except for instead of for minions, it's for spells. Five mana, Vexilis. Why do I feel like this was already in the game? I mean, there's other cards that have the same sort of vibe, like the, the guy from the Nexus. I forget. Or maybe this is the guy from the Nexus and it's not like they restrict the cards in such a way that like, oh, you know, every card that comes out during an expansion has to be from a dungeon from that expansion or like from a zone from that expansion, right? Like that's obviously part of it, but they do obviously branch out. They'll have other random stuff. <clears throat> Arcane spells cost twice, which doesn't actually synergize with that at least. Three, five mana, three, five elemental and of course it'll have life steal too if you do frost laser jaina <coughs> well that'd be kind of cool if as an extension all of your arcane spells had life steal on them too he only cast the spells once it's shek mexilis that cast the copy <coughs> no i mean he only has to cast them once and you cast them the other time as the player eight mana arcane defenders Summon two, five, six golems. You know, like, isn't <clears throat> this is something you associate, like, with uh, <clears throat> Magister's Terrace, I think, is the first time when you saw, or, like, even Karazhan. <clears throat> Arcane Defender summon two, five, six golems with taunt, and oh, here we go. This is the effect we were looking for. This is an obvious must craft. The first time it gets mentioned, 
through five fucking classes when I was expecting Death Knights to be all over it. Two, five, six golems with taunt and can't be targeted with spells or hero powers. But it's not even that great for eight mana. Compare that to, hmm, it's all right, but it's still not that great value. Arcane battery is not included. Two, five, six. So would you rather summon this or would you rather summon like the eight cost uh, six, eight with reborn with taunt? But yeah, at least that's one. Thanks for that. Like I was expecting so many so far. And you might think, oh, what about the other classes? But I only really care, like I said, about Druid and and uh, Mage because they have so many, so much internal synergy, like with Counterspell and with Embiggen and stuff, the way that I... You know, it makes sense with those type of cards. <clears throat> Nine mana, five, seven. Grand Magister Ramath. Battlecry, recast each spell you've cast this game that didn't start in your deck. <clears throat> Why does that feel like that was already a card that existed? Isn't that like the... There was like a hero card, I feel like, that did almost the same exact thing. Wasn't there? The Magister Dawngrass or whatever. <laughs> I feel like it, it had like a battle cry. Wait. What is this five cost limit thing that they're. Something is bugged out about this. I swear there was a card that like already did almost that exact same thing. Magister Dawngrass. Recast the spell from. Oh, from each school you've cast this game. Yeah, I don't remember that being even that. Great, unless you controlled exactly what those spells were. Like, I don't remember seeing that card a whole lot. And even still, I mean, since you play in wild, is that even in the wild format? I feel like it's not. Yeah, Alteric Valley, well, so it must not be that good, or maybe it's only played at like super try hard high levels. So I guess I'll go by the timer of that thing even if <clears throat> that's not what's going to determine it. I thought that would come out a day after. Three hours left. Holy shit, this was such a boring, stupid idea to actually wait for it. I don't know why I'm even doing this. And then we'll end up just doing some other boring Malagos type thing anyway. Or we'll do the same elusive stuff that we were <laughs> doing before. But at least it'll make arena fun. Maybe I'll just do a ton of fucking arenas as Death Knights specifically. Because I wouldn't even care to play as the other classes like... Uh, just to play with the new cards as those classes. You know, Wild Arena was one of the most fun and one of my favorite things ever. So, like, what were the arguments against it that I easily debunked at the time? <clears throat> People said, oh, it's, uh, you know, you can't get synergies of cards. But you normally don't get synergies of cards anyway. Like, because it's such an open field that you'll get such a random mod hodgepodge of cards that you won't be able to make any sort of, you know, synergy or set between them. But... People draft for value anyway. You normally ignore value, or I mean, uh, synergies and, and <clears throat> sort of any sort of connection between the cards. You, in fact, you often ignore, right? Like you'll get a card that is like a Murloc and buffs Murlocs, but you'll do it just because of the value or there's nothing better. So you ignore that anyway. So I don't really buy that argument. And then the other one was like, Oh, you might get some overpowered busted shit, but that's kind of part of the fun. You could still get that anyway. In fact, you might be more... I don't know. It's just there is no reason why Wild Arena shouldn't be an option. I'm not saying replace the current arena, but just have it there as a bonus format. It's just boring seeing some of the same cards over and over for the whole time. Why shrink the card pool when there's so many fun and amazing combinations of stuff that you could do? But that is exactly why they do it. Fun is... <clears throat> not allowed. A powerful mage known for his proficiencies in Fire Frost and Algebra. <clears throat> no, that's Pantheon, the calculator from the fucking... Uh, what was that even called? I forget which dungeon he was in. Was that the... There was the Architraz, the Botanica, and the... I can't actually remember the name of all those. Somewhere in Tempest Keep. <clears throat> recast each spell you've cast this game that didn't start in your deck. That is quite strong. I mean, because that's such a common thing that people do anyway. Yeah. Oh, you know, even Time Warp. It'll cast... Oh my god. 
they'll, they'll do the bird to cast time warp 50 times as if they didn't win already and then they'll cast every single time warp again through this in case that doesn't work that deck can really trigger you <clears throat> one mana feast and famine give your hero plus three attack this turn mana thirst four mana and lifesteal I feel like most of these mana thirst effects haven't been that good, but it's always for cards that are like super uh, low cost. So I guess it's fine. It's I don't like this whole template design where like every class has to get the same exact thing, right? Like this would be mana thirst as well. It, when they do the template format for like every single... Uh, well, I guess they don't do it for every single card, but certain cards will have that theme to them. <clears throat> Please, sir, may I have some armor? One mana flight of the bronze. This is like when they're coming in to clean up the wrath gate, let's say, even though that's not really what the picture looks like. Uh, or that wasn't the bronze dragon flight. That was, uh, what is, uh, Alex Raza? The red, but I don't think of Alex Raza as red. Why do I think of her as like orange, which kind of overlaps with bronze, which kind of overlaps with uh... <clears throat> Yeah, she is red. Yeah, why do I think of this one as orange, which is making associated with the bronze dragon fight? That's kind of weird. <clears throat> Legacy. I like that they did classic as a format, but what they should have done is like <clears throat> they should release a or they should rotate classic. So like every once in a while, classic goes from cl just classic to now they'll add the first expansion to now they'll you know how they do like with RuneScape or or EverQuest or something. They'll be like rotating server or like how they're even doing with WoW now. You don't really think of it that way, but you know they'll go through and do classic, but they won't just leave it in limbo in classic forever. They'll do classic rotates to BC, rotates to Wrath, rotates to. I mean, I guess they could just stop there, right? Why bother with the rest of the stuff? But then they'll do, do uh, rotate to Cataclysm, rotate to uh, uh, Mists of Pandaria and stuff, <laughs> blocking it out of my head. So that would be a great idea for uh, the classic format. I don't see why they wouldn't do that, in fact. Unless maybe they have done it and I just don't realize. But no, this must be... Imagine fucking wasting all your dust on that. There's still a lot of fun to be had in that. Like, imagine you play the game for the first time, and somebody says, oh, just play in the classic format. That would give you a pretty close experience to <clears throat> what you would have had. So why not, uh, even if you don't want to deal with all the power creep and stuff, either that or arena, those would be the two best ways to kind of get into it. Okay, what was I at? I was at Paladin... <sighs> okay, Mana Thirst, Flight of the Bronze, Discover a Dragon for one, Mana Thirst, Summon a 5-5 five, five Drake with Taunt. Okay, that's the first one that's actually quite good. Compare that to deal 2 damage versus deal 3 damage, and it also requires 8 Mana Thirst. Why is this a fair comparison? I'm even finding a major imbalance already. Even compared to this, for only 4, no, but for 8 you had, uh, I can't remember what the other Mana Thirst was. Yeah, deal two damage versus deal three damage for eight versus not that it costs you eight, but that just you, you have to have it. Mana throws for seven, summon a five five with taunt. That's quite uh, quite amazing of a difference. You're telling me Hearthstone will make a one mana five five with taunt, maybe when bronze flies. Please they acknowledge their fucking bullshit power creep, but it's not really funny. One mana two one. Sanguine Soldier, Divine Shield, Battle Cry will deal 2 damage to your hero. Really? A 1 mana 2 1 with Divine Shield requires you to take 2 damage. They just need someone to ouch for them. Why do you go from a bullshit power creep card to a garbage card? Like, why would this be worth dealing 2 damage to yourself? 2 mana 3 2, Blood Matriarch Leodrin. For some reason, I feel like I've seen some of these somewhere, even though I deliberately try to avoid obviously seeing anything. 
after you summon a minion with a, you know that's what uh, multiplayer games kind of show <clears throat> is like the whole esports ego e peen kind of bullshit where like everything becomes and that happens with games like chess and stuff too whenever the, there is a competitive aspect or any sort of multiplayer aspect to it even if it doesn't have like a career path or esports to it like who really cares about the esports for this game anyway but whether it be competitive like chess or otherwise like everything becomes an ego thing so that's why people don't have any sense of discovery or wonder for the game because it's just like all a zero sum min max net positive kind of gain system right people don't even play the game to have fun even if even at the low levels, which I find weird, right? Even if you don't play the game, like like with League of Legends or something, the people that you would see are not esports players, and they're probably not going to be, not to dash their hopes or their dreams. You're just playing in a random lobby against random people, but there's this sort of misplaced, displaced egotism to it still, as if they have some pretense of that, like, oh, we're playing for min-max, max value, but we're not even that good. We're not even diamond. We're not even whatever top ranks. I forget what they even are. Um, so like you can't play the game casual and for fun, but you're also not at the top. <clears throat> That's where the elitism, elitism kind of comes in. Like either you are trying to play it for that reason or you don't. So that's the difference between someone like me and maybe take notes or whoever people were trying to, you know, imitate that sense of elitism, but they were really kind of fakers in a way with that, that I've seen over the years. It's like people used to call me an elitist, but I would at least acknowledge that there's certainly a vacuum where it's an intent thing, right? Like in something you might choose to be that way and choose to try to be the best or, you know, do it for efficiency purposes, but other times you might do something with no intention of doing that, right? You might do it actually just for fun. So it's not an excuse, it's just a recognition of a different measure or a different priority and pursuit that you're doing. Whereas with, okay, if you are doing it with that elitist mentality, then you can point to that person playing League of Legends in a random casual low level game and acting like an elitist, but then why are you there in the first place? So that would be the point with uh, metagaming, <clears throat> either you shouldn't be playing in the same match as a person who's trying to have fun, or you should be trying to have fun. That's the point, right? You can't be an elitist in bronze or silver or, or whatever, or in a random lobby, right? You shouldn't be in a random lobby in the first place. You should have a pre-made setup of people you play with because they're all tryhards and you're a tryhard. <laughs> And you're all like, you know, like doing a, an arena in, in WoW or something. You should already have a team and a set. So you shouldn't be bitching to pugs or random people that you're getting matched up with. Because you should be so good that you have that set up anyway. <clears throat> that sort of, uh, I forget what it's called in like, uh, certain circles. <clears throat> like competitive circles. You would have like sort of a line of people like at any time of day to just call upon and say like yeah we want to play a, a match that's almost what streamers would have but that would be a different reason not because the streamer is so good but because everybody wants to chase clout with them so like they'll carry somebody to a, a high level or something so it's a, it's a challenge even just to be able to not be a liability enough to hold them back i forget who uh, that was that i saw it might have been asmongold he got carried by other gladiators, like in a 3v3, to just to get a mount or something, being a completionist. So that would be like the completionist dream come true. Like you're not good enough to do something, but you love to have all the cosmetics in the game. So you're not doing it as a token to show like, look how good I am. You're doing it as a token of completionism to try to get every achievement and stuff, despite your lack of ability to get it on your own. <laughs> I like that as an interpretation. In a multiplayer game, that would kind of be me too. More so because I wouldn't have interest in, you know, grinding out stuff or whatever. But I would still want to collect all of it. <laughs> like I was an achievement hunter before achievements even existed. I would try to fill up every little speck on the map. Or I would try to collect every everything of a set. Just a set of items or weird stuff that nobody cared about. Try to collect every mount. Try to collect every pet uh, that you could you know, summon and have follow around you. Just because <laughs> that's the way that I would be. And, and I would play almost like a single player game. Right? So you're not doing it for anything. You're just doing it for the sake of it. <clears throat> 
two mana, three, two, blood matriarch, Leodrin. After you summon a minion with less attack than this, give a divine chill and rush. See, that seems kind of stupid. <clears throat> but it works, I guess, if you buff it or, you know, do kind of base buffs over time. All is fair in blood and war. Two mana for Quanthalos. Holy. Give... You have a friendly minion plus three attack. Give your hero plus two attack this turn. Not really too exciting. There's plenty of cards that do similar things that we've seen over the years. For Quell, Kel, for Kel, for Qui, for the city. <clears throat> I don't know what that means. Three mana, seal of blood. Give a minion. So I still don't know what the hero power is for the Death Knight or how the, the rune aspect works even. Or even how corpses work despite reading through all the cards. I mean, corpses are just kind of like you generate them by killing stuff or from various uh, mechanics that mention it, <clears throat> which maybe makes it seem kind of insular and contrived. But that, that's how you can already tell there's too many mechanics. No other class has so many ingrained kind of contrived one-off things. Like even the Demon Hunter had like the sigils or something <clears throat> as a card type, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem right. So we aren't going to have a unique mana cost for the hero power i would have kind of done that i would have you know how the you know obviously base hero powers cost two demon hunter power costs one <clears throat> man i'm not used to reading this much shit i haven't <clears throat> felt like struggling to talk since uh orwell i think was a game that caused you to read so goddamn much <clears throat> reading like blog posts of the rebellion and stuff uh like a 1984 ripoff um but yeah, by the time we actually get to the dead night, I'll fucking lose my voice. So I will do a silent stream. Quiet gamer, more like silent gamer. Ha ha, reach my final form. <clears throat> um, what was I going to say? <clears throat> uh, oh yeah, that's just like too many mechanics. You have the runes, you have the corpses, you have the... Uh, what, what was the other thing? It just seems like they're overdoing it in a kind of a contrived way where it feels kind of like a gimmick where it's kind of like in wow right no other class had something well or they had runic power so like you can equate runic power to energy or to mana or to focus or to which there was no focus even at the beginning i kind of preferred hunters with mana but <clears throat> there's because any argument against mana for hunters is an argument against mana for everybody else. Because, like, why? Oh, like, it's an arbitrary number instead of a fixed number. But by that logic, mana should be a fixed number, too. So I much prefer a much more dynamic amount for it. Uh, that's much more flexible, and you can change it, and you can even build into it. And it even determines, like, your crit. Well, that's more so intel intellect, but it's a shared factor of m the more in intellect you have, the more mana total you're going to have, too. <clears throat> but, uh, and I keep forgetting that point. It's, uh, like with the runes, it's, it's even a self-evident secondary kind of mechanic. Like, for example, <clears throat> you have a situation where... You have runic power to equate to, okay, focus and mana and rage and energy. So you could even say that like with warriors, like warriors had ener uh, rage just made for them. Uh, rogues had energy made just for them. And every other class shared mana <clears throat> that was going to have something. So those did feel kind of unique. So you could say that, but then you have runic power, but then you also have runes. So that made it feel like a little bit contrived and, and too much is my point. So it, it feels similar here, like where you can have... A mechanic like corpses but then you have this ruining thing i don't even know how it works i assume it's a cost because it's associated here but it could mean that it gives it to you but then there were no cards that said they there were there was nothing that said it cost specifically that or that it generated that so if they cost that how would you get it and if they generated it what would you do with it i guess i didn't really see that element of it <clears throat> Seal of Blood, give a minion plus three, plus three, and Divine Shield, deal three damage to your hero. It is kind of weird seeing a paladin do stuff like this. It kind of goes against their whole principles, but I guess that's the point. Don't hate Coagulate. The other one was completely stupid. Uh, <clears throat> that deal, yeah, this doesn't seem worth it at all. 
Oh my goodness, a one mana 2-1 one with Divine Shield. Like, that's so good, right? By today's standards, at least, it's not. That that's, could have been a much earlier expansion card. Give a 3-3 three, three Divine Shield, deal 3 damage to your hero. But some of these will fit into Arena. Like, whenever they make bad cards that seem like, oh, nobody will use this in Constructed, you know they made it deliberately for Arena. All's fair in Blood and War, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Four mana, four, four, Daring Drake. Rush, battle cry. If you're holding a dragon, gain plus one, plus one. <clears throat> Time Warden, four mana, three, five. Battle cry until end of your turn. Dragons, you summon, gain taunt and divine chill. So what were the two things? Oh, first of all, how dare you? Uh, second of all, how dare you? <coughs> when are we getting the silver, gold, and diamond dragon fight? I mean, bronze is the closest to gold that you're going to want to get. Uh, gain plus one, plus one. Well, I don't get the joke behind this one. How dare you? Second of all, I don't get it. <clears throat> what were the two things that I wanted to make? I could try to do the armor druid, but I specifically wanted to make Malagos and the whole Thrasian thing. And then I also want to just make that one card that actually mentions a mechanic I like between the two classes. It is at least nice that they didn't forget about it completely, but it has nothing to do with the whole anti-magic shell ideation that I had. So that's unfortunate. But yeah, I guess the Malagos with the whole arcane bolt is a pretty obvious connection to, uh, to wild. <clears throat> Six mana, five, five. Blood Crusade. It's like nothing game-breaking or, or mind-blowing. It's just kind of... It would be a doable thing. <clears throat> Six mana, five, five. And it wouldn't be too expensive either. Which I'm going to be pretty short on dust, unfortunately. It's like that's what competitive play in Hearthstone would have forced people to do, too. Either you play the game a ton, which I guess I did anyway at the early stages of Hearthstone, or you have to spend a lot of money, which is unfortunate seeing those two, two things tied together. <clears throat> I guess that would be true even in games like League of Legends, though, if you were to play like a rotation of many different heroes or champions. But you wouldn't, uh, oh, after you get a certain number, you wouldn't necessarily need to keep doing that. It's not quite the same as, well, I guess there were so many that were released over time, though. Either you play the game a ton, which you probably would have to do anyway, or you spend money. So I, <clears throat> basically, I don't like the connection between success in in a sport or esports and the amount of money you spend right but i guess that's to an extent true in every in every sport you have to pay a certain amount of money to go to venues and compete and uh, at least at a low level to kind of prove yourself maybe or to go to training or or what you put in your body training regiment you hire a special chef you hire you know, a personal trainer. So there is an element of that even in real sports, I guess, to an extent, but it's just not as blatant. Yeah, like compare the NBA doing all those things, like I said, to NBA 2K, where you actually have to buy the cards of, you know, buy the best players. Galaxy, Opal, bullshit, whatever. <clears throat> Six mana, five, five, Blood Crusader. Battle cry, your next Paladin minion this turn costs health instead of mana. Okay, we've seen that before. Defending Silvermoon takes a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and blood. <clears throat> seven mana eight eight anna chronos uh this picture doesn't uh kind of evoke that image i forget what he's actually supposed to look like but this doesn't look anything like him he looks too vicious and i don't know animalistic here battle cry send all other minions two turns into the future oh this is kind of cool we haven't seen too many mechanics like that even with all the temporal kind of cards that sort of make turns uh manipulatable thing this is very cool actually imagine well i guess some of them have been like like the priest one right i'm trying to remember <clears throat> like you take an extra turn then your opponent takes an extra turn or it's actually the opposite of that to make it seem fair so you, like, you give them a turn but they're not ready for it but you have a you know, OTK combo. And of course, Time Warp is a cancer card. So I almost blocked that out of my mind when I say there haven't been too many cards like that. But this is a very fun one. I love this effect. All other minions, two turns in the future. So there's a lot of unique things you could do with that. That's it. You're you're all in timeout. 
zero cost undying allies after you play how many do we have left so the one two three four five and then of course how many pages of this <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. This really would take like a whole day to really look over and you know, that, that's what some of those streamers would do, right? They would do like a, let's do a card review, review when we hear that the new thing is coming out. <clears throat> Zero cost, undying allies. After you play an undead this turn, give it reborn. Okay, that's fine. Well, it makes it seem singular, but that would mean after you play any undead that turn, so you could play like five of them and they would all get reborn, would I would assume is what it would mean. But it just makes the wording on a lot of cards in Hearthstone is weird, but people kind of give it a free pass because they try to keep it simple, but then it often leaves out like a key qualifier. Like it'll say, I don't know. This is kind of an example, but in the inverse, like, an undead or any undead <clears throat> best friends forever one mana animate dead resurrect a friendly minion that costs three or less so <laughs> like worse than resurrect in every way like why i guess you can control it a little bit better but yeah well how would you play this over resurrect maybe because resurrect is in wild so not only is is there a power creep aspect that can be a problem in card games but there's also this format problem that's like we're going to remove a card from standard just so that we can make another card that does almost the exact same thing that we removed so why not just not remove the card in the first place so that you, you don't have so many duplicate cards so we'll either make it slightly better or slightly worse but then why the fuck did you make that first card to begin with, right? It's just such a self-defeating, uh, sort of cannibalizing design philosophy. <clears throat> Resurrect from the minion that costs three or less. In the old days, they used to animate the dead one bone at a time. It's all done by commuter computer now. Good one. One mana, one, two. Because it has animate in the title, get it? Crystal Smith Cultist. If you're holding a shadow spell, gain plus one, plus one. Um... Some of these low cost things are pretty shit. Like, oh, so it becomes a 2 3? A 1 mana 2 3? Like, wow, that's really gonna be, uh, I just think they're neat. <clears throat> 2 mana 3 2. Mind Eater. It's a Worgen? Some of these pictures are, like, so oddly specific. Attic. Because, like, some classes, you like, a, like showing a Torrent Paladin. Right, you don't associate, but over time they did become like, oh, they're the Sunwalkers. That was kind of a cool in lore justification for it, at least. In their own way, right, they could explain it. <clears throat> it's like how in real, in the real world, like how did every, uh, every group of people around the world, even if they didn't have communication with each other, come up with like seemingly the same religious structure of beliefs, even if they didn't, uh, <clears throat> Even if they, the names and the, the superficial aspects and the mythology behind them might be different, the purpose and the morality associated with most of them was almost exactly the same, right? It's almost like it's a psychological phenomenon or need that people have and not so much an intrinsic absolute as it poses itself to be. Two mana, three, two. <laughs> See, this is the kind of natural way I like to segue into rehashing my debates. That's kind of a good one that we talked about before. I did that in Ocarina of Time when doing the uh, the treasure room where you're trying to beat the odds in a randomizer. That was pretty hilarious. I just love the scenario more so than actually the content of what's being said, which is very serious and not at all meant to be humorous, but just knowing like the Hans Niemann thing, like, oh, I'm, I'm having a snail pick up coins and plants versus zombies. And so I start talking about that. So I just find it hilarious, the scenario of how these things come about. Mind Eater, 3-2, add a copy of your card in your opponent's hand, deck to your hand. I mean, we, we have like a million cards that already do this, but sure, one more. Watch out, Brain, she'll chew you up. She's a Mind Eater. Some of these flavor attacks are actually pretty good. I didn't like the ones in uh, <clears throat> Nathria, cause the, the, or at least the mini set, like the, the Judge courtroom joke stuff that was like a little bit too much habis corpus kind of the name even the name of the card feels like a flavor text right you're supposed to save the punny stupid stuff for here but the name is actually supposed to be something that sounds like an ability <clears throat> three mana because like what class in hearthstone has a spell like that 
that would be so silly. Probably over time they have done that, but they're not supposed to be puns in the name. Three mana, three, three. Haunting Nightmare, Death Rattle, haunt a card in your hand. When you play it, summon a 3-3 three, three soldier. Okay, that's kind of fun. And you could kind of do the inverse, like haunt a card in, in your opponent's hand. When they play it, it summons a 3... Th well, that's like the Nerubian thing, like where you shuffle three Nerubians uh, things into their deck. When they draw them, it, it summons a 4-4 four, four <coughs> for you. Or it could reduce what they summon to a 3-3 three, three also. What is that sound? <clears throat> haunt a card in your hand. Okay, not as scary as the one where all my teeth fall out. Four mana, two, four. Bone caller. And that should have been my... If I ever got a job at Blizzard, that would have been my role. Writing flavor text for cards and hearts on. That's because I can be so punny. <laughs> That's kind of a bottom of the barrel thing, though. Bone caller. Taunt, death rattle, resurrect. Four mana, two, four. Haunt, Death Rattle, Resurrect, a friendly undead that died this game. I mean, the, the way the priests kind of gamed the system with Resurrect and stuff was that they would have, like, they wouldn't summon anything for, like, the first five turns, and then they would have only one big thing die, like a 6-6 six, six for 6 or some crazy effect, and then it, they would Resurrect, like, oh, I wonder what it's going to bring back, and it would only have one option to bring back that one thing that they played. What is Haunt? Sound? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's going to be a cool thing to see too, like hearing all the battle cry effects of the cards and I would say like the hero cards, but there are no hero cards, like all the emotes. I guess just the emotes of the the four Death Knight ones. I think they may miss a real opportunity with doing uh, the, like not having any hero cards. I guess they get, they feel like they burnt out the ideas from doing the Knights of the Frozen Throne stuff, but... Or yeah, like haunt is a word that means like, uh, what is it? Like garrison's haunt or whatever. Like it's a, I don't know actually what the, it's like a manor that's like all, they use that as like a location in WoW many times over. Like garrison's haunt or this guy's haunt. I can't remember all the names of them. <clears throat> Resurrected friendly undead that died this game. Hello, I am speaking to the un am I speaking to the undead of the household? We have been trying to reach you about your skeleton's extended warranty. I can't believe I wasted two days doing this just because I thought it came out yesterday. I guess that always is my fault that I didn't know. I swear they like changed it though, or something. Or like why would they announce like, oh yeah, we're gonna be patching it on the fifth, but we're not gonna release it till the sixth, which is probably standard practice, but is Haunt the same mechanic as in Demon Lock? Uh, Haunt a heart card in your hand when you play it, summon a 3-3. Three, three. This is kind of unique. I don't know what exactly I'd compare it to. When you play it, you summon an extra 3-3. Three, three. <clears throat> Speaking to the undead of the household, we have been trying to reach you about your <laughs> skeleton's extended warranty. Okay. Four mana, Grave Digging. Draw two cards. Cost one if a friendly undead died during your last turn. After your last turn. What? It should be... That's kind of weird. So why not just say this turn? Oh no, I guess it could be during... No? Wait. Like, during your opponent's turn, if they killed one, I guess is the point. Where you have to... Play the card or you take damage. <clears throat> Grave digging as a profession has high turnover. It's important to maintain... <laughs> okay, that's... That is a really, uh... Really good one. It has high turnover and ha it's important to maintain headcount. 5 mana, 3, 5. High cultist balance the one thing that's weird is like with the rokara and stuff not knowing whether the card is a real character from the lore who i just don't know about because i stopped paying attention to the lore like after around cataclysm or if it's just one that's made up for hearthstone which is kind of weird or if it's just like an alteration of one that is a real character but that is specific to heart like uh frostlet jaina that never really happened in the lore but they just 
kind of extrapolated on it like a fanfic card almost. I kind of joked about like, you know, this sounds like a fanfic that somebody would have this fantasy that Jaina would become evil and say bow to your queen. That's such a like fetishy kind of line that people would fantasize about. Re resurrect all friendly undead that died after your last turn. So it kind of punishes people, I guess, for killing stuff on your turn so they can just play around it by not killing it and then you can still do the same thing later. It's one of those frustrating things like a death rattle. Like you can't really play around it at times. It's not a cult. It's a collection of like-minded individuals that enjoy undead and rituals and doing what I say. <clears throat> Doesn't seem to be a lot of high-cost stuff. That's kind of weird. Like, even the Death Knight cut off at five cost, but then I guess a lot of them... Like, why are there no nines and tens? <clears throat> Everything cuts off at like five or six. Well, I guess not all of them, but you need at least one or two ten cost things. Especially for priests, it's kind of fitting to have very high cost stuff. So we have another shadow word. How fucking many shadow words do you need over the course of the history of the game? Five mana, shadow word, undeath. You'll... Do damage to all enemies. If a friendly undead died after your last turn, okay, they're kind of milking this mechanic a little bit too much. It's not even a key word. You could come up with a keyword for it that represents the idea that if a friendly undead died after your last turn, like burial or something, why do they have to say it so verbose? Deal two more, which isn't even really that big of a deal. Just do Dragonfire Potion for six that deals five Oh, I guess it's only to enemies, though. We like to call it fun death here. Oh, instead of undeath. Some of these are, you don't really get when you're reading them, but when you say them aloud. Six mana, six, six. I love the whole Valkyr aesthetic in the universe. Sister Savlana. So. Valvna? I don't know how it wants you to say that. Permanently add a vision of darkness to your hand. Discover a shadow spell. This stays in your hand. Okay, that's kind of cool. So every turn. It almost makes it like a hero power. Like you can just keep doing it. Huh. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Okay. Yeah, I would find it unbelievable that they haven't used that for another flavor text for any other card ever, though. You can't recycle flavor text. You're not from software, like with the Smelter Demon. That was one of the most amazing moments triggering wise that I've ever experienced. You beat the same boss that they recycle after five streams the second time and 10 streams the first time. And what did they do? They recycled the same exact fucking flavor text. They don't even bother to explain like why he came back or why you're fighting another one or give you any kind of extra flavor for why they recycled the boss or for going through the trouble of killing it again. I guess most people probably wouldn't have that experience because they wouldn't spend 15 streams and like, dozens of hours on the same boss but still it is still insulting shadow of demise each time you cast a spell transform this into a copy but it has no huh each time you cast a spell transform this into a copy of its flavor text okay <laughs> making fun of what i just complained about this might be the first card that's ever like that because otherwise what other thing am I thinking of when I see this icon? This is like the Valera, the Death Knight hero card where it's like, it's just the base. Well, I guess any hero power that doesn't cost anything looks like that, but you rarely have se ever seen that icon. <clears throat> one mana, one, two. Yeah, they're just going to recycle through several different cards. The same thing that the hero card would have done anyway uh, for the Death Knight between its battle cry and its actual hero power. <clears throat> one mana, one, two concoctor. Add a random concoction to your hand, which of course they do a good job with some cards of showing you, you know, stuff that they talk about in the description as an example, but with these they don't. So you have no idea what a concoction is, a de which probably drives people who want to metagame and come up with strategies for all these cards uh, crazy ahead of time. A dash of death with a pinch of death and a sprinkle of death. <clears throat> one mana ghostly strike. Deal one damage. Draw a card. Why do I think ghostly strike was already a card? It's probably like ghastly strike or something. <clears throat> okay. Combo draw a card. What are their demands? And I got to appreciate the pictures a little bit too. Two mana three two. 
Ghoulish Alchemist. Your next concoction costs zero. Okay, so this is going to be the big mechanic that they do for every rogue card. And I threw it on the ground. Two mana, just poison, a oh, potion belt. That could also be a name for a card. I'm giving them ideas. Discover two concoctions, pick your poison. But again, they're not going to show you what the concoctions are. I don't like when they overdo a mechanic like that, though. Almost every card is going to mention it for every class, whatever they decide to make it. Of course, in Magic, they do that very similar thing. Like, every expansion has, like, a new keyword. So that's another instance where Hearthstone copied Magic. The one moral victory that Hearthstone can take over uh, Magic the Gathering Arena is that aesthetically and just the whole setup of it, they do seem to take a lot after Hearthstone. Like, this game set a lot of standards, despite how much people might say it's like a casualized version of magic or that has copied a lot of other card games in a lot of ways just on the presentation value they definitely uh did a great job as blizzard <clears throat> typically always does just with the voices and the flavor and the pictures and everything <coughs> each time you cast a spell okay i read that i don't know why i'm so obsessed with looking at the pictures for the rogue ones pick your poison two mana one four Potion Master Putricide. After a minion dies, add a concoction to your hand. Good news, everyone. I'm a rogue card now. Okay, that was one of his lines of dialogue. Good news, everyone. Something, something. Taken from some show, which I don't even know. Like Futurama or something? <clears throat> what was he before in this? Or maybe he wasn't anything. Oh no, Professor Putricide. After you play a secret, put a random hunter secret into the battlefield. Yeah, not really the greatest application of his... I don't know, that one doesn't really fit too well. Yeah, what is with everything leaning so low cost? How can the highest cost be a four cost? Am I missing something? I mean, obviously they'll release more in like the mini set, but they might even have a lot of cards locked behind doing Path of Arthas, but... When you look at those, those are only showing up as Death Knight cards. So I'm not <clears throat> even sure. After minion dies, add a concoction to your hand. Okay, we'll have to kind of see what those are. Not that I have any interest in playing Rogue. It does make me kind of want to play Arena. Although I wonder why it didn't feel that way as much. I guess because you get to see the new class. But like for the last expansion, I didn't feel like playing Arena at all. I played it like once or twice and I got bored of it immediately. I did get some crazy... Sh deck with a uh, hunter with denathrius and like king crush and stuff or the guy who summons king crush if you i forget what the condition is is it hemet i think it might be another version of hemet that's like you get to summon king crush from your deck or whatever or just summon one if you meet a certain condition but then i went like four and three which shows you my perception of what a crazy deck is is not really that accurate the biggest problem i run into arena is like uh I never get any card draw even offered to me. So I always run dry on cards later in the game. Two mana, <clears throat> two one, Rotten Rodent. Battle Cry, reduce the cost of all Battle Cry cards in your deck by one. This makes me think of the thing where after 9-11, they canceled a game that had to do with like planes and explosions or whatever, right? Because they felt like, oh, it wouldn't do too well or it's like offensive because of you know what just happened so like imagine if this was a bat they'd be like oh my goodness we can't make a a card that's like a poisonous bat because then people will think of covid and the fucking whatever if a bat caused it even <laughs> it's dead but it's not a mouse like if the plague just happened they wouldn't be allowed to do this three mana two four vile apothecary at the end of your turn add a random concoction to your hand okay how many fucking concoction related cards do you want come up with something different when he's feeling extra malicious, he uses his licorice flavored one. <clears throat> Wait, I was so distracted by that, I didn't really process. Reduce the cost of all death rattle cards in your deck by one. Okay. Four mana, two five, noxious infiltrator, poisonous. If a friendly undead died after your last turn, this is a big phrase that they keep using that they probably should have come up with a keyword for. Deal one damage to a minion. Noxious, but not toxic. He's very polite. <clears throat> For, that could be a, a real phrase that you use in real life. Like, oh, somebody's toxic without knowing it or without meaning to be. Like, without ill intent. 
they're just very obnoxious and they embarrass you in front of your friends or they piss everybody off. Four mana, four, four. Yeah, I can be noxious just because I always fucking, uh, like in debates, would always win the debate so people would get pissed. Or because I'm such an elitist victim blamer. Scourge Illusionist, add a 4-4 four, four copy of another Death Rattle minion in your hand to your deck. No, in your deck to your hand. It costs 4 less. 4-4 four, four copy. Wait. Oh, then whatever it would normally cost. Okay. They're not tricks, they're illusions. Isn't this weird seeing the highest cost card be a 4 mana thing? That is so bizarre. Or even being 6. Like, where are all the 8, 9, and 10 cost cards? Maybe I just have some other perception. Not every expansion always has that, but it's weird. Okay, we're almost done. We have Rogue, or no, we just did Rogue. We have Shaman, Warlock, and then there's going to be a ton of fucking neutral ones as we just wait for this to actually come out. Which I guess the best indicator would be this. I don't know why I didn't think this would come out like... Uh, later like i thought it would come out a day or two after the actual class <clears throat> i feel like they've done that before or like some if you think about it in the context of like the next ramus adventure right they would release like one wing every week or every so often <clears throat> with the adventure or whatever but i guess this is a little bit different okay <clears throat> it's kind of weird that they give you that just before So there's always going to be 10 for every single class, which I feel like is not always the case. In fact, it couldn't be the case operating under the logic of like the Dr. Boom hero card, unless I guess it could still be the same number of cards, but Warriors got that instead of a different card that every other class got. But yeah, I don't feel like every class always gets the exact same number of cards. One mana, one three. Scourge Troll. Death Rattles given to this minion trigger twice. <clears throat> this is where I'd put my death rattle if I had one. Two mana, death weaver, aura. Give a minion death rattle, summon a three, two, three, two zombies. Overload one. <clears throat> two mana, three, two, Drakari zombie. That's actually pretty good. Two mana, summon two, three, two zombies. Yeah, unlike the five mana card for like druids that summons two, three, twos for five. That's so shitty. I guess they're three, threes with taunt, but... That seems like a really bad card. I don't know who is ever going to use this. The only way I could potentially see that this is good is if you get a one that bypasses the choose one effect <clears throat> where you get to do both. I don't know. That, that seems like an old school value mindset card. Like, oh, this would have been good like maybe five, ten expansions ago. <clears throat> uh, knitting is a harmless hobby. Weaving, though. Shadow Suffusion, good word. Three mana. Give your death rattle, th deal three damage to a random enemy. Oh, give all of them. So that could be okay. Be honest, you had to look up what that means. No, but I praised it at least. Three mana, three, two. Unliving Champion. Battle cry if a friendly undead after you. Undead died after your last turn, summon two, three, two zombies. Okay, not a very fun effect if this is going to be the theme of the shaman set. Unlive a little. Four mana prescience. Draw two minions for each that costs five or more, summon a two, three spirit with taunt. At least this is a slightly different one. <clears throat> it's like how they had so many hunter cards last expansion that had to do with summoning the beast. Uh, wild Steed, summon a random Wild Steed. They even made fun of that, I think, uh, with one of the cards, right? How many cards mention a Wild Steed? Uh, what was it that said that? Oh, yeah, here. If I had a nickel for every time a Hunter Legendary Minion in Castle of Nathria summoned three different companions, I'd have two, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. But not even just the legendary aspect, just change it to if I had a nickel for every time they mentioned Wild Seeds, period. Right, that is like almost all the cards, I feel like. <clears throat> oh, why do I keep doing Wild? I guess I did finally find my Wild card back, though, that I wanted for, uh, for the Legend rank. This totally could have been it. Uh, the Ungoro one. I can't believe I never noticed that. I'm sure I had gotten it on my other account way back whenever it 
Yeah, doesn't this look like he totally... Because Wild is just associated with the vines. These long-lost card backs require a machete to shuffle. Why not make a pun about the Wild format? Probably because it was barely even out. No, it had been out by then. <clears throat> for a while. And it even has the orange thing. This is the rejected legend card back design, and I don't even mind it. You have the vines, you have the orange legend mark. Like, what the fuck, dude? That's it. So I would totally get that to show my love of uh, wild if I actually had gold to, gold to spare. <clears throat> okay, we've seen that. We've seen that. <clears throat> Two three would taunt, summon a two three would taunt. Okay, so you could summon two of them. <clears throat> Wait, don't change the channel. I love this vision. What? Don't change the channel. I love this vision. Five mana two two, Arkaner of Dread, taunt. Summon uh six six undead with taunt. Okay, Drakari Specter. This is like one of those cards that isn't bad, but it's just kind of boring. Two mana, two, two, and it, it would appear a lot in Arena, I'm sure. Like, whatever, that Death Rattle that summons a 9-1, or... There's so many that do that. Like, it's a shitty 1-1 one, one that summons a 5-5 five, five when it dies. <clears throat> that was like a old gods card, I think. I hope it's good news. Five mana, three, six, Rock Gill. How much will they fucking milk Murlocs till the end of time? Uh, it's like the Pikachu equivalent for fucking Blizzard. Just like the QC whatever thing that they just use over and over and over. Uh, give your other minions death rattle. Give your minions plus one plus one. There's a lot of stuff that just rewards you for flooding the board, which I guess is a fitting concept for shamans. In the in the summer, hot yell. I wonder if that's one of their flavor texts. That was one of my old shaman jokes that I would make all the time. Like, if you were playing a deck that I didn't like, I'm not shaming you for playing it. I even did that when I was just doing my Road to Wild Legend. <clears throat> In the summer, hot yo. Mechanized bot yo. Everyone else, not yo. It's actually a pretty good card, though. Eight mana. <clears throat> Finally, we have one of the high-cost cards that we complain that every class doesn't have. Blood Berserker. Taunt, Lifesteal, Reborn, Death Rattle. Deal 3 damage to a random enemy. 8 mana, 3, 8. Like the Alakir effect. Just give it every fucking effect in the game. Taunt, there should be a card like that with every keyword. Well, I guess it wouldn't be. No, it would be. It wouldn't have to be a wild card. It could just use effects that we've forgotten about. So it would have charge and rush too. Which would make absolutely no sense. But just give it literally every single keyword ever. Taunt, Lifesteal, Reborn, Death Rattle. Not really uh, that good, though. I don't know. He should really go see a dentist about that tusk and a dermatologist and a therapist. What, all about the tusk or just in general? Now your character assassinating the poor guy. Nine mana, six, eight. Overlord Drakuru. Rush, Wind Fury. Wow. Yeah, they've for totally forgotten about charge. Like, how many charge minions have there been? I like how my tangential nature of commentary actually comes into usefulness here because I'm mostly just trying to kill time before it comes out, but normally I would, I'm like this anyway. Like, if you think about in the recent expansions, they did give these two, which since Demon Hunters came out even, but like how many charge minions have they really made in the history of the game? Like, these are super old. This is pretty old. This is just in the name. It's not actually a charge card. Like, how many recent charge cards? So I'll count these two. This is pretty old, isn't it? When did this come out? Yeah, the Grand Tournament. The, none of these count. This is really fucking old, Grand Tournament. This actually came out with the Knights of the Frozen Throne, I think. So, I guess <laughs> that was only four years ago. The Witchwood, I can't remember... Uh, if that was before or after that. Wait, but it's not even charged. It's just hard to charge in the fucking name. They're baiting me with that. Yeah, no, none of these are actually charged minions. This was hilarious. It's like, it was never good. But imagine in the context of now, like, oh my goodness. I'm going to go attack four times or come up with a way to destroy the weapon 
just to do a two damage hero power. Like when priests can just start with that if they have whatever minion that gives you that. So that's also old. <clears throat> that's also old. Why is this an enchant card? I thought this was a core card. It's legacy. Grand tournament. Okay. This is one, but it's not a base charge, but I'll still count it. So that's like only three cards in the last several years. <clears throat> Legacy, this is fine. If you have 15 or more armor, gain plus three, plus three in charge. Okay, this is four. It's just a mechanic that they completely replaced with Rush and completely neglected. And I like how half of them are only appearing because they have charge in the name. <coughs> None of these. Legacy... Grand Tournament. Goblins versus Gnomes. Holy shit. They had quite a few, obviously, at the beginning. Mean Streets of Gadgetzan is pretty fucking old. Alicia has Angry Chicken. Mean Streets of Gadgetzan. Legacy. Gadgetzan. Holy shit. United and Storm. When your pirates have charge. Okay, five. So there's been like one charge card every year for the past five years. That's my point. They have very fucking few. Why do I feel like this wasn't in the Grand Tournament? I don't really... So maybe I saw it a lot in a different expansion. Standard play, but it was uh, released then. That sometimes happens. There'll be a card released, like, let's say, at the beginning of a two-year cycle. And it won't be used until, like, the very end. Right before it's about to go to Standard or, you know, much later. Because it'll be given value by some other card. It comes out <coughs> later, which is always fun. And take that to an extreme with the idea of, like like wild cards in general right like the death knight expansion now might give value to a card that we've never used before in the history of the game that's been out for like nine years that's the whole fun of it and why i love wild because you never know what kind of crazy shit people can come up with like that <coughs> okay so which one was i on that caused me to go on that tangent it was something to do with charge which was probably this even though it doesn't actually have charge Overlord Dracru, 9 mana, 6, 8, Rush and Wind Fury. After this attacks and kills a minion, resurrect it on your side. Oh, the one that I didn't give credit to was uh, Mimron's Head, right? Because that does have... Does it actually show that on the... Uh, like, what it makes? It doesn't actually show it. Why the fuck doesn't it? Like, whenever it mentions something, it should show what that is. But that must have charge, otherwise you wouldn't be able to... Do all the crazy shit with it. Imagine if they change it so it only has Rush. <laughs> that would be the ultimate cock to a card that you can barely ever get out anyway. Like, it's not good, but it's still fun to use just as, like, a troll thing. I actually was using it in my Iron Juggernaut thing. That went from, like, such a disciplined core idea to, like, I put the Dr. Boom hero just so it has Rush. I put that just because it deals with mechs a lot. And then the Dr. Boom hero summons the three one ones <coughs> every couple turns so that makes it seem like oh you do that combined with whatever mechs you already have on the board combined with the one that you're summoning and you might be able to actually get that <clears throat> but it still sucks after it attacks and kills a minion resurrect it on your side now see this is one of those vague well it does say kills a minion but what if it dies too then resurrect it meaning this on your side overlord one <laughs> that's good all right, that's fine, I guess. Or yeah, what if it kills itself and dies in the process? I guess it doesn't really do anything. 10 mana from the other side. Summon a copy of each minion in your hand. What the fuck? They attack random... Okay, they attack random enemy minions and die. It's like that magic card where I didn't read the whole thing and I got so pissed. Of course, that was much more verbose. The nine lives. It's like, oh, this is so bullshit. It's overpowered. Because it's like whatever... Whenever they take damage, they uh, lose one of the nine lives instead. But I didn't read that they actually lose the game when they lose all nine lives. Obviously, that makes sense. But whenever they take a source of damage, they don't actually take any damage. I thought it just made them basically invincible, <coughs> which some cards in that game are like that. Like indestructible is a mechanic. Just they're immune to everything. I still don't even know how you really deal with that. You can just kind of ignore it, I guess, to an extent, or overpower it with too many attackers, but so that it can't block all of them. Why did the Dracar Dracuru cross the road? 
I do like the trolls place in the lore though, just in the sense that they're like the original race that, you know, the, the sun will turn them into high elves, the moon will turn them into uh, night elves. It's like, you don't really think of that in retrospect, but, <clears throat> and like the origins of so many of the races is so simple. Like gnomes, humans, and dwarves all came from uh, the sort of titan machinations and creations that you see like kind of in old you are. So that's the birthplace of like everybody just from that one simple thing <clears throat> thanks to yog saran actually twist of fate you know the curse of flesh it's quite a good piece of lore and only the, the dwarves seem to care about it because at, at the beginning it almost seemed like only they were created that way and humans and uh gnomes would have had some other origin but then it ends up all just kind of being the same like the vicral even come from that all the titan creations given uh, the curse of flesh at least one mana one three devourer of souls now this archetype originally began in like the black temple i think with like the reliquary of souls and then they've done so many since then the host of souls which has that six sick mr voltron remix that i still listen to to this day i love that uh the host of souls from uh one of the five man lich king dungeons after a friendly minion dies, gain its death rattle. Winner of the Scourge's annual Funnel Cake Devouring Contest. 12 years running. <clears throat> Two mana, Shallow Grave. Trigger a friendly minion's death rattle, then destroy it. Which would trigger it again. It should at least, like... So basically, trigger it twice and destroy it. Jump scare. It should, like, silence it as a trade-off. Three mana, Scourge Supplies. Draw three cards. Yeah, that's a... Speaking of how rare charge is as a mechanic, silence is a super fucking rare mechanic, which is why that starfish was so good. Right, that's one of those that everybody started to use in the meta just because it's such a unique AoE silence effect that almost no class has ever had except for priests, I suppose. <clears throat> Jump scare. Okay. Bird supplies, three mana draw, draw three cards, choose one to discard. This is uh, like a semi-graceful charity. Now, why is that even... This is like Arcane Intellect, except you draw three instead of two, and then you discard one. Eh. Graceful Charity is you draw three and discard two, though. I like how such simple card draw in Yu-Gi-Oh! is considered so overpowered. That was like a banned card. The same exact thing. Or like even Pot of Greed. Like, people would lose their shit over Arcane Intellect. And not even consider it a good card in this game, necessarily. <laughs> But Pot of Greed does the same exact thing. I guess the only difference is it actually costs something. Whereas that's just free. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you can just play it. There's no limit on playing spell cards. <clears throat> so you could, you could theoretically play your whole 40 card, 60 card deck of only spells in one turn. If you had enough card draw. 3 mana, 2, 5. Walking Dead. Taunt. If you discard this minion, summon it. Let me guess, the flavor text is going to have something to do with the Walking Dead series. Watch out for the Scourge, Carl. I don't even know if that is a character from there, but it must be. Of course, my only experience with that is the season one of the game. <clears throat> two mana, two five, or I mean, three mana, two five. If you discard it, summon it. Four mana, Twisted Tether. Yeah, see, this is one of those joke names that I don't like. Save that for the flavor text. Uh, destroy a minion, give it stat to a random undead in your hand. Now, what the fuck? Well, this is good just in the sense of destroy an enemy minion. It doesn't have to be friendly. Like, this is better than Black Crystal Potion or Siphon Soul or whatever, because it just does it for less mana, and it doesn't destroy a mana crystal. It's just a net positive. Yeah, like an objective improvement over Black Crystal Potion. Destroy a minion, give it stats. Even if it didn't have the second part, just destroy a minion for four is not bad. Uh, first convince your opponent, or at least it wouldn't have bad, been bad in the, throughout most expansions, <clears throat> that you just want to play Tetherball. Then you get him. Five mana, five, three. Amorphous slime. Something to do with weapons, or maybe not. Discard a random undead. Summon a copy of it. Discard random undead, death rattle, summon a copy of it. Okay. A crucial component of the Lordaeron. Or no, Lord. Lord. 
non I don't know what the fuck that word is. Lord Iran Eon Choice Awards. Five mana seven seven. Savage Yimjar, whatever the fuck they're doing with these Vicral. A lot of this stuff has been, as much as I say, like they tend to branch out and do stuff that doesn't always have to do with the the area of the expansion in the game. They have done a lot of that here. Uh, Rush, Battlecry, discard two cards. Five mana, seven, seven with Rush. When is an undead door, not an undead door. When it's a Yimjar, okay. Five mana, Soul Barrage. When you play or discard this deal, six damage randomly split among all enemies. I mean, I don't think that's particularly good though. Works especially well on jazz musicians. <clears throat> six mana, four, four. Infantry Reanimator. Battle cry, resurrect a friendly undead. Give it reborn. Get a life or two. Not a bad value, actually. A lot of these are really going to be good in Arena. 8 mana, 6, 6. Darkon Drathir. Lifesteal. At the end of your turn, deal 6 damage to the enemy hero. That's okay. I mean, you're telling me that you didn't suspect him of being evil, even though his first four letters of his name are Darth. Yeah, like Darth Vader. Where the way that the dialogue in the original movie almost implies that that's his name, right? Like, you can't win, Darth, or, uh, what's the other one? Only a master of evil, Darth. Like, and then people, fanboys will justify it like, oh, well, he's just, he wouldn't call him by his name, but he would at least call him Vader is a more fitting title. Because, like, Darth, do you mean Sidious, Plagueis, me, or the other one? Bane, or there's all kinds of other... Which Darth are you talking about? At the end of your turn, deal six damage to them. So it'll deal six, it'll heal you for six. Like a built-in fireball, and it's okay. I mean, I don't see that actually getting a whole lot of use. One mana, one three. Sun Fury Champion. After you cast the fire spell, no, I, yeah. What? What do you mean? Deal one damage to all minions. What fire spells would a warrior have? I guess they might, might have added some. What the fuck is this? Did they accidentally put this in Warrior instead of Mage? Champion of the Great Blood Elf Bake Off, 12 years running. Isn't that the same? Uh, it's similar to this, I guess. Devouring Contest, 12 years running. <clears throat> That's so weird. So they must have some fire spells here. Maybe for the first time ever, maybe even as the Warrior fan that I am, <laughs> they I never oh maybe they made spells previously that had to do with like a forge or something uh considered fire now too blazing power I like when they do that when they go back in wild cards right like they'll add undead maybe to a lot of cards that didn't have it before if they just added the undead keyword or the type or they'll do that with uh, you know other things so, like they might give a type that never well this type existed before though it's just Give a minion plus one plus one. Repeat for each damage friendly character. That's actually kind of good. Apply heat directly to the damaged area. Two mana. Embers of strength. Summon two one two guards with taunt. Uh, mana through six. Give them plus one plus one. That's good for the cost at least I guess. Remember remember the halves of ember. Three mana three three. Asvidon the Grand Shield cast a copy of your last spell your opponent played. <clears throat> if you think that's strong, you should see the gr his great great grand shield. Four mana last stand. Draw a taunt minion, double its stats. That's okay, I guess. If you play two last stands in one game, you're a liar. <laughs> I guess so. Four mana. Or yeah, if you use that fucking cool down twice in the same duel or like how some battles would go on in pvp so long and wow that he really would get to do that some matchup or like arena matchups would be hilarious for that <clears throat> right like you would have certain matchups like a priest a warrior and something else a druid that would just go on and on fucking forever i forget how they actually prevented that <clears throat> if they put a time limit or i didn't do a ton of arena but that was always ridiculous Draw two cards, cost one less for each damage friendly character. <clears throat> Light of the Phoenix. 
It's three in the morning. Could you please put put out that phoenix? <clears throat> Four mana, Sunfire Smithing. Equip a four two sword. Give a random minion <clears throat> in your hand plus four plus two. Uh, there's a card pretty similar to this, I think, that involves a true silver champion, right? It's simple, simple. Just throw it in the sun. <clears throat> Flamberge. Thor. Thori Belor. Four mana, four, four. Rush, death, rattle, go dorm, and cast a fire spell to revive it. Kind of weird associating warriors with stuff like this. Phoenix Egg. Dormant, cast a fire spell. Mascot of the QFC. Quelthos Fried Chicken. Five mana, four, five. Disruptive Spellbreaker. At the end of your turn, your opponent discards a spell. That's kind of cool. Make an anti-spell warrior, even though there wouldn't be enough to support. I mean, even one to two two cards like this is almost enough. So you could still put the Nerubian in, you could put this, and then you could put all the elusive minions just to kind of express the point that you're trying to counter spells. But this can be really good because if you know that they only have like a really high cost spell in their hand, it almost works similarly to Immolate, where I got so pissed at that card, like all my cards in my hand are too expensive. So it's not like, oh, just play them in the next turns to play around Immolate, but you can't, right? Imagine they, they coin out Immolate on turn three. You're just fucked. There's nothing you can do about it. That seemed like a really bullshit kind of card, but somehow I didn't actually see it that much in the meta even. Who is the Blood Elves Dentist? Yeah, I'm acting like I don't know the meta, but I did just do a run to Legend in September. So how much could it have changed really from then? So that Warlock deck is probably still pretty good. That's the problem sometimes is a meta deck will stay meta for like a super long time, even through the next expansion. A lot of those cards and the theme of that deck might still stay relatively relevant. Six mana, four, eight, which is kind of a sign of good design. The fact that that means that the power creep didn't completely change everything in like a contrived way. <laughs> Silver Fury, Fury, <laughs> Fury. If it's a worgen, I guess it might be. Silver Furry Stalwart. Haunt Rush. Can't be targeted. Oh, shit. You're making me... I was just talking about that <laughs> counter spell. Fuck. Haunt Rush. Can't be targeted by spells or hero power. Six cost. It just makes me feel sad because... You know, they're split between different classes. So I can never combine all the... I should look. Like, how many class cards have ever had this effect? There's only been a few, but like the... The bear shark or whatever the fuck. Uh, don't strike until you see the whites of their teeth. So in this expansion, there's only been like two. Right? Which is unfortunate. I can't believe they overlooked that with Death Knights. And <clears throat> let's look in totality. I guess I could have spoiled that there are no neutral cards <laughs> with that. Which is unfortunate. So this obviously we love. There's two. And Tyrantis is especially awesome. One there. This one almost doesn't even count. Because it, it isn't one itself. One there. Look at what a neglected mechanic this is. For such an awesome, awesome thing. Wait. Oh no, the second one is just make them discard a spell. So there aren't going to be any more. So wait, have there not been any new ones like this since uh, Galakron? Golemans. Rise of Shadows. Galakron gave you a whole fucking bunch, though. One, two. This one. This one. <coughs> Did it give you any class cards like that? Uh. No. Wait. This is showing Galakron and a book. So what does that mean? What the fuck is that? Maybe it was like a mini set? in the middle of Galakron? Or you had to do like some special single player stupid thing to get it. Okay, let's just read the rest of the neutral cards and then hopefully that'll take long enough for this to actually come out. Or maybe it already did somehow and it won't match this. But I would assume that that's what uh, it would coincide with. Let's see how many neutral cards actually are there. I should have probably done this yesterday, but I guess it doesn't matter because then I'd be fucking waiting here anyway. I guess that's really my problem is I don't... Wait, what was that? Why did it only show like two things? 
Um, I don't have enough dust, so I can't really make a lot of other fun things <clears throat> that I maybe would want to play. So how many pages is this? One, two, three, four. So, uh, 32. 33, 34, 35. <clears throat> Actually, maybe I'll take a break and do it after. I wonder how long... Well, it would be two hours, obviously, but not probably full two hours. It's probably like an hour and... Well, when would it switch from... It could be two hours and 59 minutes. Right? When would it switch from two hours to one hour? So two hours and 59 minutes could still be considered two hours all the way until two hours and one minutes. I don't know how... Or it would probably be as soon as it hits two hours, it'll be two. So it could be any time... There's like 21 minutes left of that. Then it'll be another two hours after that, possibly. I guess you'd know by this too, but it's still gonna probably kick me off and, and make me wait in a queue, right? After making sure that I'm here. I will buy with all this gold, at least as many packs as I can just for the fuck of it. And even if I <clears throat> just disenchant stuff, I guess I can try a Malagos thing, a Malagos mage. And uh, I'll make that other card too. So at least I'm at least happy I get one fucking elusive card. But it, supposedly there are no neutral ones. Zero. Because I just accidentally kind of looked at that. <clears throat> right? Because if you go in crafting, it would certainly show up unless there's some other way of them expressing it. But this would only be like 200 dust. And then. Uh, The Malago stuff is going to be a lot. Okay, let's just look at the last of the neutral cards. And then <laughs> it should be almost time to go like, well, another two. It's just at least say one hour now. Right? It'll be the hour on the hour. So it'll be like two o'clock Eastern time. Or no, maybe I'm wrong. How they keep track of it. Less than an hour. So it'll be <laughs> probably one o'clock. 57 minutes, so let's take our sweet time. We can obviously just play a couple games. I was just getting kind of bored of my elusive thing. Not because it isn't amazing and I love it, but it just, I played it a little bit too much over the years, too. Not even just like in the last few weeks. <clears throat> okay, here we go. So yeah, we get like two can be targeted things in the whole set, which is at least it's something. At least they don't have actually fucking zero of them. So yeah, like I said, Invincible is obviously a prime opportunity for a card what was the last one we saw was silver furry stalwart it'd be better if he was actually a worgen <clears throat> one mana yeah that's almost the kind of pun they would make they would make him a worgen just to be able to do the flavor text make the artist do your work for you as a lazy flavor text fucking bottom of the barrel writer <clears throat> one one mana one two arms dealer after you summon an undead give it plus one attack <clears throat> need a hand so again like a arena type card maybe one mana two one this is like the what is it uh, whatever that picture is that painting that is so famous uh, how can i not know the name of that two one banshee that throw will give a random minion or random friendly undead plus two plus one that's always not too bad making the face very funny one mana, zero, two, foul egg, death rattle, summon a three, three undead token. <clears throat> or no, a chicken. Definitely expired. Three, three. I mean, I don't see what's so special about cards like that, but... Two mana, two, two. Astalor, Bloodsworn. Battle cry, add Astalor, the protector, to your hand. Mana thirst, deal two damage. It's kind of random to rope in damage to that. Add Astalor, the flame ringer, to your hand. And of course, it doesn't bother to show you that far. Like, okay, what does that one do then? They do a good job sometimes with showing these, what it mentions, but then they don't go far enough. Or sometimes they don't show it at all. Like the concoctions. It's possible that there's just like too many to choose from. I think I'll still try to make a point to play the Lich King and uh, Arfis just to get even more Death Knight cards. Like we'll get the Frostmourne before we even fucking... I, I think that one's kind of lazy design. Either make a different version of Frostmourne or <clears throat> just uh, 
own the fact that you already put it in the game so you can't really just make a card version out of it have they ever done that with other cards like imagine they add a druid card that's also a very definitive form of power creep like you can just play a card that you generated through some specific means before a bossy studio what the fuck is that like uh like the Ysera cards could be added to the Druid collection as cards that you can just play. Right? Have they ever done something like that? I can't really think of an instance. So add the Flame Ringer to your hand, gain five, ar five armor. The Protector, so he's using like an Ice Shield or something. Blood Sworn, he's using Arcane Intellect. I hear his third phase is even more intense, but thankfully you'll cuck me of even being able to see it. Two mana, two, three, Bone Flinger. If a friendly undead died after your last turn, deal two damage. It's the Scourge Bringing, Plague Slinging, Bone Flinging Basher. Two mana, two, two, Coroner. Battlecry, Freeze an enemy minion. Thankfully there haven't been too many puns like <clears throat> related to this as much as like the legal aspect of the last set, the mini set. <coughs> Battlecry, Freeze an enemy minion. Mana Thirst, Silence at first. I'm not a big fan of the Mana Thirst aspect. Just like your total Mana Crystal. That's not a very fun mechanic, really. It's almost like the whole Joust thing. Like if you have higher... Eh, not really. Like if you have higher cost stuff, it gives you a bonus. Uh, silence at first. It was at this moment that the coroner decided to become a farmer instead. Yeah, Farming the fucking rotten, plague-ridden uh, shit, right? That's how it spreads in the first place. Through the grains and the whatever. Food. That's why uh, Stratholm, like, oh, they've already eaten it. Or I forget exactly how he knows for sure that they all need to be purged. I guess he just doesn't want to take any chances. Which, this is one of those, like, conducive morality arguments. Like, for example... You'll say, oh, Jaina, I can't watch you do this, Arthas, when he's purging the city. And Uther is like, there must be some other way. And then they just leave. Okay, what the fuck is the other way then? Right? It's like, it's easy to say you wouldn't do option A to try to solve the problem. But then what is option B? Oh, you don't have one. Right? It's one of those idealistic, stupid one, stupid things. Like, okay, so then don't do it. Arthas just sits on his hand and does nothing. And then Stratholm becomes all zombies and kills everybody. And then you, or like they become zombies and then you have to kill them anyway. So if I was him, I would have just done that. Okay, I'll sit on my hands and let you geniuses, Jaina and Uther, come up with something, which they obviously couldn't do because they didn't do anything. And then watch them turn and then kill them, right? Like just, that's what people want to see. Do it reactively instead of preempting it. Incorporeal, corporal. Oh, you know what? They missed an opportunity with Falric and Marwyn unless they are going to be, uh... Actually, I'm kind of so curious. Oh, come on. You fucking dumbasses don't know how to make a game. How could you not do those two, dude? That would have been the best, most exciting. Oh, they'll save it for the mini set to make you fucking pay, pay real money. Holy shit, dude. <clears throat> two mana, five, five. After this minion attacks, destroy it. Now, that doesn't mean that if it gets attacked into, though. Right? And you could give it taunt or something. This is kind of a fun... Hard though, I like this. These highly statted ones with some negative effect. You won't believe how long this was in called incorporal corporal. Okay. <clears throat> two mana, two one. So no Nerzol for the hero cards or for the hero portraits, like in the armor. That's a minus one. No Falric and Marwyn. That's a minus one. So unless they've already been in the game in some form, and I'm just a fucking moron, <clears throat> which wouldn't surprise me. <clears throat> but you can still make another. Uh, copy of it there were the ones by his side during stratholm as evidenced by the line children of stratholm fought with more ferocity <clears throat> they were also by his side supposedly when he goes to kill his father right you can't really see them too well it's almost like one of those generic retcon things like you didn't know who they were so they could have just been generic anybody but then they give them names and identity later so they probably didn't necessarily intend that at first, but it doesn't really matter. That's like a retcon that doesn't hurt anything because you're like, you're filling up a blank slate with something that doesn't contradict anything. So they, again, those could just be any random skeletal foot soldiers or some random whatever. Or it could be some major lore character. <clears throat> two mana, two, one. Infected peasant. That's like in Star Wars saying like, oh yeah, this stormtrooper was actually some major character. Infected Peasant. Death Rattle summon a 2-2 two, two Undead Peasant for 2-1. Uh, becomes a 2-2. Two, two. Okay. 
The peasants are revolting. Two mana, three, one. Umbral Geist. At Death Rattle, add a random shadow spell to your hand. After all, and that includes now a lot of the Death Knight spells are shadow. I guess is unholy. <clears throat> and I guess blood is, is shadow too. After all, one can't leave his shadow lying about and not miss it sooner or later. Don't you agree? Oh, who is saying that? Just this guy? Usually it's like a lore character being quoted, but they often won't even tell you who it is. And it's often not the one in the card. <clears throat> or sometimes, you know... At the beginning of Hearthstone, I always said that. Like, I don't like the generic things that seem like they could fit in any universe. So, for example, right, like, Arms Dealer is just an Arms Dealer. At least if it's some specific reference. Not that it has to be a legendary, but, like, don't say Foul Egg. Say some area egg, like an Ungoro Egg. Or give it some identity in the universe. So, like, a Coroner is a generic card that could be in any any game. This could be in Magic. This could be in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Whatever. Right? You... You always got to add some, uh, I know that's hard to do over this long of time, but at least Vicroll is somewhat associated with, <clears throat> with that. Two mana, two, two, Vicroll, Necrolite, Battlecry, give a friendly minion, death round, summon a two, two zombie with rush, rampaging zombie, which we've seen many times in other cards. If at first you don't succeed, ride, ride again. So what I must say with the initial sets of both the Demon Hunter and the Lich King, neither of, or I mean the Death Knight, neither of them are really that interesting to me. And there is obviously still power creep. So it's not like that's what I'm asking for. Like, oh, you just want it to be busted. It just doesn't have that interesting of a theme to it. Three mana, three, three, Amber Whelp. If you're holding a dragon, deal three damage. This is like purifying the undead, obviously the Wrath Gate. What is, I love that cutscene so much because that's like a good scene from a movie where like it's, there's so many things going on, right? The Horde and the Lions are working together. They're fighting the Witch King. Then Sylvanas supposedly is having them uh, drop the toxins on them and uh, maybe, uh, what was that guy's name? The apothecary, whatever, maybe was betraying her or maybe she really just scapegoated him. So there's some intrigue there. The Lich King even gets dropped to his knees and <clears throat> pants a little bit. And then the dragons come in after. Like there's, there's so many layers where like things are going on that are not just directly related to uh, sort of the, obviously Sarfang's son dies there. Then he becomes a death knight. Like, that is a really good scene. In fact, most of the Warcraft cinematics and stuff are interesting even after I stopped playing. Like, Azjara was really good with uh, Nazoth. Where, like, it, it kind of shows her as the alpha. Even the, It makes him look kind of a little bit of a pussy. But if you're holding a dragon, deal three damage. What is a bronze wall's favorite garnish? A little thyme. <clears throat> But yeah, like, they're really good at making those cinematics. Old soldier and stuff, even if the story in the game doesn't live up to that at all. Right? It's like one of those memes. Uh, World of Warcraft on YouTube versus World of Warcraft at home or whatever. Like, we have World of Warcraft at home and then you see the actual game is dog shit compared to all the cutscenes and all the great larger-than-life lore. I'm trying to think, like, what was the... Uh, what was that other cutscene? There was Nazoth, there, uh, there was like a whole war bring. Oh yeah, Sylvanas burning down the tree, morally gray thing <laughs> that people memed on. I always said like, it's in her personality to be willing to do that, but she's too smart to do it that early, right? She would still wait she, till she was even more powerful or like it didn't serve any practical purpose. She's just too, uh, what do you call it? Like pragmatic. It's not that she isn't evil enough. Oh yeah, she'll burn down the world tree. She'll do whatever. Right, it's not a moral argument, it's just a practicality argument. That just makes everybody pissed and it doesn't really help her. <clears throat> Three mana, four, of course they probably have some retcon bullshit explanation. She was actually trying to help or she's actually a good guy. Or just blame it on the old gods. Those are like the tropes of the series. Three mana, four, five, bloody knight. At the end of your turn, deal two damage to your hero. There are quite a few cards that do this. Chill and Yeti would never betray you like this. So for one mana less, you take two damage. So I guess at least they're trying to equate it and say, oh, it's not power creep, but three mana, four, three, brittle skin zombie. If it's your opponent's turn, deal three damage to them. I was born with glass, bones, and paper skin. <clears throat> three mana, three, two, crystal broker, mana thirst, five, summon a random three cost minion, you could play it just as a solid 3-2, or you could get a 3-cost, or you could get 
for mana to stand summon a random A cost minion instead, which is pretty good. Again, this will be very good for Arena because it's good no matter when you play it. Broke Crystals Woke Blueberry Fruit Gummies. Three mana, three, four. Drakari Embalmer. A very cool picture. Look at that. Some of these almost look like they're from a different universe. Like some of them are too cartoonish. And this one's just badass. Battlecry, give a friendly undead reborn. Three, four. A troll in life, death, and online forums. <clears throat> I made that prediction just from the outside. Again, now to somebody who was playing the game that uh, Bon Somdi would be like the surprise secret final boss of whatever expansion that was. Uh, I can't even remember now. Uh, maybe Battle for Azeroth. I guess I was wrong. Although I don't even know. But I think it was... Uh, was that even when Naz it must have been Nazoth or Azara or whatever the fuck? Uh, three mana, three, three. It's kind of weird finding them in the same expansion, though, if you did that, right? That should be... Uh, Azara should have been a precursor in a different expansion, and then eventually you get around <coughs> to Nazoth. Three mana, three, three, Enchanter. Enemy minions take double damage during your turn. That's kind of good. I know Scourge Bane, your materials and tips appreciated. Something you would say in trade chat. Uh, three mana, two, five. Hawkstrider Rancher. After you play a minion, give a plus one, plus one, and plus Death Rattle summon a one, one Hawkstrider. What does this have to do with... <clears throat> I prefer the Hawkstrider Nacho Cheezer. Three mana, Nerubian Vizier. Like, if you think about a deck where you include all the Nerubians... Would it really have a consistent theme throughout it? Kind of, but... I almost want to try <clears throat> something like that. Because I love the 6 mana one so much. I keep forgetting the name of it, but the one that makes spells cost more. Discover a spell if a friendly undead dies this turn. After your last turn, it costs 2 less. No, they're supposed to make spells cost more, not less. One of the essential constructors of the North Wind, North Rend Wide Web. 3 mana, 5, 4. Reborn, battle cry. Die. That is a new one. We've never seen a description quite as succinct as that. So it'll die automatically. So if you summon it from other means, like summon a random three cost minion and you get it, then you won't have to suffer that. But even then, well, there's basically a magma rager to. Oh, it, it even is. I didn't even read that. I totally made that connection myself. Why is he so mad? Well, you'd be mad too if you were created as a joke. Three mana, two, two. Silvermoon Arcanist. Spell damage plus two. Your spells can't target heroes this turn. This turn only. I'm something of an arcanist myself. <clears throat> Three mana, two, five. Silver Moon Sentinel. Taunt, mana thirst, uh, eight. Gain two, plus two, plus two, and divine shield. Pretty good. Spent eight mana polishing this shield. Please don't make me bash you with it. <clears throat> Three mana, two, four. Sun Fury Clergy. Restore three health to all friendly characters. Battle cry. Restore six health instead if you have six mana. Again, some of these are just rewards you for doing nothing. Just playing it later. Why is the sun so mad? Won't anyone ask about its feeling? It is kind of a bad uh, design philosophy to do that. <clears throat> four mana, four, four. This picture somehow seems familiar a little bit. Plague spreader. Death rattle transform a random minion in your opponent's hand into a plague spreader. <clears throat> what do you mean by patient zero? I'm very patient. <clears throat> four mana, three, six. Sanctum spellbender. Whenever your opponent targets another. So there's like no low cost uh, legendaries though. There was one there. <clears throat> Probably gonna see a whole bunch coming up. So after all this buildup, we still don't know what the hero power does. That'll be the final secret. We did see that it cost two, and we saw the picture of the ghoul. So we're kind of unveiling it one little thing at a time. We saw that it was a picture of a ghoul like a few days ago, but nothing else. Now today we saw that it was two cost, kind of by accident, but... So I was speculating it might cost a different amount. I would have rather it cost three and be like slightly more powerful. So that kind of goes in contrast to the Demon Hunter, right? With the Demon Hunter, they made it cost less and be a little bit worse, like a one cost with one attack. So this should be a three cost with a slightly stronger effect. <clears throat> I think that would have been a cool idea. As much as I, you know, point out, oh, you shouldn't do it just as a gimmick. That is kind of a cool thing to mix up that not every hero power always has to cost two. <clears throat> oh, you know what would be fucking awesome, too? What would Justicar do? Because <clears throat> there's... Oh, shit. I almost want to see that for myself. Is it like how I did Justicar with Demon Hunter, even though it's dog shit. You get two, two attack for one mana. Like, it, it's not going to be game-changing. <clears throat> it would affect the Death Knight, too, because... 
it's not going to say on there, oh, works for every class but Death Knight. So that is the kind of... Because Justice Card is not a card that you can play. Well, I guess there's other things that upgrade your hero power anyway. But, like, <clears throat> they would have thought about this, too. That's what I like about the kind of wild design. Stuff that you wouldn't even think about comes into play at, at various times. <clears throat> Whenever your opponent targets another minion with a spell, redirect to this. So this is kind of same thing as this use Spellbender Secret. For one more mana, though, you get a 3-6. I'll take that and that and that. And if they target this in the first place, it kind of, you know, defeats the purpose. So I guess that kind of, as much as I said, none of these spells really, or cards play into the anti-spell thing. This is one that does it. So I just have to remember. Uh, <clears throat> so how many are left? Do we have one page? Oh, that's it. We're almost done. How could I get through that many so fast? So there's eight, 16. Well, really? Did we miss a page or something? Huh. I guess we're almost done. But yeah, the, they make Nazoth look kind of like a pussy in there, but maybe that's just to show that Azara is so alpha that she in that cutscene. That is a really good one, though. It's kind of a weird paradox. Like, he's not impressed with him. Like, oh, he, she sho he shows her the Empire. Right, and he's able to make them that much more powerful, but he can't just escape from a stupid prison. Like, it's kind of a... He's so strong, and yet he's the one kind of begging you for help. He seems to need her more than... I'll take that and that and that. Uh, then she needs him. Four mana, four, four. Silver Moon Armor, Rush. And if you have seven mana, it gives you plus two, plus two. It couldn't mean that, like, oh, if you have seven mana remaining after playing it, because then you would have to have 11. And, like, it's obviously just... Seven total mana. All the glitters is silver. So it would become a 6-6 six, six with Rush. Four mana, 2-2. Two, two, street Sweeper. Uh, Battle Cry deal two damage to all other minions. Okay, I guess. All other. The Sweeper hit of the set. Good one. <clears throat> five mana, five, four. Probably unlikely to be true, though. Five mana, five, four, Infectious Ghoul. Death Rattle give a random friendly minion. Death Rattle summon an Infectious Ghoul. I do like some of these cards that have like endless loop potential to them. But of course, they can still be silenced. They call him that because of his laughter, also his plague. I didn't like the Jailer thing, though. That can be kind of cancer. Once they get it, it's almost like, what, what do you even do? You still have to just finish them off. And it doesn't. it wasn't even really that hard to get. But then again, I guess my style of play is so slow and I'm using such shitty suboptimal decks anyway. Mid-range, anti-spell, fucking garbage. They call him because call him that because of his laughter, also his plague. Okay. Five mana, four, six. Tenacious Sand Lane. Lifesteal, whenever this attacks, yeah, it's gonna fucking disconnect me right before I uh <laughs> right before I finish reading these. But no, I'll probably play a couple games <clears throat> still. Five mana, four, six. Life steal. Whenever this attacks, deal two damage to the enemy hero. Once bitten, twice healed. Five mana, four, four. Translocation instructor. Looks kind of like Sylvanas, actually. What the fuck? Uh, battle card. Choose an enemy minion. Swap it with a random minion in their deck. You might not get a Sylvanas card here, like again, but you'll get uh, the ranger Sylvanas. Is at least pretty cool. I don't even know how you would get that because it says, oh, get it from the shop. You probably had to get it like a while ago. A lot of those things are like timed or whatever. I'm always in favor of just like have everything be buyable at all times, even if it's super expensive or even if you have to use gold. But I guess they make certain things tied to pre-purchases. Like you could only get Nazoth if you pre-purchased whatever that expansion was. And so that would sort of force people to do it because they know you'll never be able to get it again. So if you could get it later, then those people would feel cheated. But they were cheated anyway because they fucking bought microtransactions in a free game, which you should never do anyway. So it's kind of a bad philosophy, but it works for me. It's like you can get away with something. So if everyone was like me, games like this wouldn't exist or go on. But I don't have to worry about that because there's plenty of clowns to do the work for me. Translocation Instructor. Choose an enemy minion, swap it with a random one in their deck. Translocates behind you. Psh, nothing personal kit. Six mana, six, six. Bone Lord Frost Whisper. Now, is this the one from RFK or. Who, who is that one? That was like uh, Rage Chillwind or something? 
I love the there was some flavor text related to him I think in WoW itself or I forget where it's from where it says like he was a decorated hero of the Battle of Mount Hyjal and so he like he he did such a good job there or whatever that he was promoted to watch over Kalimdor afterwards so the entire Kalimdor Scourge presence is under his control and so he's given the incredible responsibility to carve out the entire continent for the Scourge. And he starts with the RFK and RFD and stuff. That's such an awesome thing to show, like, the amount of respect they give him. Uh, it's, like, even more of a daunting task than Kel'Thuzad, because Kel'Thuzad already has the Plague Lands. They're in, uh... In Kalimdor, it's completely like he's a man on his own. In a way, you could say that's kind of an insulting job because it's like you're setting him up to fail, but he doesn't really even fail. Like, until the lower characters, obviously, the player comes along. Uh, what was his name? I think it's Rage Chillwind, isn't it? Isn't he already a card or something? There was some really good flavor text about him somewhere. <coughs> A Rage Winter Chill. Employed by the Burning Legion during the Battle of Mount Hyjal. He's the first boss of Hyjal Summit. He arrives in camp in eight waves, blah, blah, blah. Where did I read that text? There was a really, really good whole article about him. He doesn't have a card, though. Or at least I don't think he has a card. I'm a fan of the weirdest things that people wouldn't like, but I think the result is a pretty justified one. How could they get rid of this flavor text like that? Unlike most liches who were loyal to the Lich King, Winterchill was fanatically loyal to the Burning Legion. Or wait. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not associated with that, but I'm saying he was given that responsibility of, of watching over Kalimdor either way. During the Battle of Mount Hyjal, he was one of the commanders of the Scourge and attacked different bases for the humans, orcs, night elves through the battle. After some time, he became, began to attack alongside Alasgalor. He was killed during the battle. But wait, how does he end up at... Maybe I'm confusing it with somebody else. Who the fuck is the one in Razor, Fan, and Downs? Aminar the Coldbringer. Okay, never mind. I'm confusing them. So, what was his lore then? He did something in the past, and then he was given that slot. He's the leader of Death's Head's tribe. But what did he do before that? Oh, maybe I'm just confusing the two. Because, yeah, if he was killed in Hyjal, how could he be doing... Uh, <clears throat> Alright, so they don't have any of those. I mean, it's a good opportunity to add some liches in. You only really did one one of them. Bone Lord Frost Whisper. So isn't it like Ross Fo Frost Whisper? Like Ross Al Ghul? For the rest of your game, your first card each turn costs zero. You die in three turns. Downside, not if you want to be a Death Knight. It's so weird that there's no hero cards or anything. They must be holding stuff back for uh, some other set, you know, in the middle. Six mana, four, six. Shatter skin gargoyle, taunt, deal four damage to a random enemy, death rattle. Don't worry, this one's just a statue. Now, the whole thing with these was that they would always heal themselves and stuff, so it, this effect doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Or maybe that was something else. Those were the ones like in Nax, but seven, seven mana, seven, seven. Lord of the Martha are on. The double the stats of all minions in your... What the fuck? Wow, you know what? This would go along with is the elusive thing. This is kind of too much, isn't it? Yeah, because you really have to sacrifice a lot. You're playing a 7 mana 7-7, seven, seven, really going out of your way. Out of all his life accomplishments, making a 2-2 two, two tiny fin is his finest. That is kind of ridiculous. If I was to highlight <coughs> what cards I actually want to make... Of course, you can't make them yet. You should be able to, like, pre-craft them just so you don't forget or whatever, but... 8 mana, 5-5, five, five, Invincible. Reborn. Battle Cry and Death Rattle. Give a random friendly undead plus 5, plus 5, and taunt. That's kind of a boring effect for such a major, major character. No, it's not. I can see it right there. No, what's not? Oh. <laughs> that he's dead. But that's the whole point, is that once he dies, he becomes invincible. 
And that's even what Arthas says, right? I intend to live forever when he talks to Uther. Nine mana four eight. Flesh Behemoth. Haunt, death rattle, draw another undead and summon a copy of it. Perfect for fleshing out your undead deck. <clears throat> I don't think I read the flavor text on this one either. The Sun Wall. Fill your hand with random cells, cause one less for each card in your hand. The Lich King had ex extinguished extinguish the light of the sun wall once before it will take all the might of silver moon <clears throat> all the might silver moon can muster to defend it that's not a very funny flavor text sometimes they try to be funny sometimes they just give you lore so what other one caught my eye here <clears throat> this one is good but it's epic and i don't think i have the dust to spare but this is good it'll act i don't know i mean it's better than spellbender because this is a four a three six <clears throat> where a spellbender would be three mana for a one three Assuming that that even matters, but I guess there's no element of surprise with it, though. That's why <clears throat> maybe it could still be good, but that one is definitely up my alley. This one seems to fit very well with any of the elusive <clears throat> kind of decks, assuming you can get to this point, just because it's just a guaranteed thing. So once you get to that point, like we're kind of doing the same thing with the 10 mana druid spell, like... Yeah, Survival of the Fittest. You have plus four, plus four. That's a big deal. Imagine if you were to double it. Okay, so I have Malagos in mind. I have those cards I just looked at. And then what was the other one that I had in mind? Oh, just the Mage. So there wasn't really anything for Druid, huh? I almost want to look through like all the Neruvians and see if you can't find... So this is like all Armor Druid stuff. Nothing really to do with magic. I'm like Malagos. It's not that I hate magic, it's that I want these pathetic mortals. I was a big Malagos fan too. Like I made a whole discussion like where, <clears throat> I think I made a video about it, like where he's not really a bad guy. He's Everything he was saying was like right. And you know, he was trying to stop basically people from destroying themselves with magic, which the people of Azeroth were very prone to do. But yeah, that's kind of what I am. I'm trying to prevent all these clowns from destroying the whole <laughs> universe and themselves with magic. So it's actually for the greater good. So there's no druid cards that I really uh, <clears throat> care about. And quite frankly, none of the Death Knight cards interest me that much either. I almost don't even... Uh, maybe I'll just relegate it to arena play. None of these are even that interesting. But whatever. So I'll celebrate that all we get out of this expansion to my interest is this. And I guess that 7-7 seven, seven is pretty god tier. Imagine, like, as much as I get excited for some of these cards, it's like, oh my goodness, so got this a 9-13. Now it'll be a 10-18. And again, this effect is so evergreen. There's nothing you're still going to be able to do about it. You can get rid of the Lich King and put him in there or whatever, like, uh... Actually, he would be my priority. I have to wait, though, till it comes out because I don't want to buy just any random packs to do it. 